What's good, First Smoke family? We're back outside today. We got Zach Wood straight out of Compton coming to you live. But first, you know, we got to shout out the website, shop.fsotd.com. This shirt, this tee is probably already sold out by now, but go on there anyways. We got new drops happening every single month. Make sure you check out. Support the show. Keeps us going. We really appreciate it. Also, shout out to Dr. Dabber. Go to drdabber.com. Go get an XS or an all-white Evo. That's what me and Biggs are rocking. Use the code First Smoke. If you're a grower and you need grow products, if you're a hustler and you need vacuum sealers, all in the above, growgeneration.com or grow generation stores nationwide. If you're a grower and you want to try a new nutrient company, Drip Hydro, hit us up, shoot us an email, family at firstsmokeoftheday.com and we'll get you linked up with Drip. Switch to Drip, feed your flavor. Without further ado, we got Zach Woods. I had to go through this whole fucking therapy thing, you know, where I'm like watching, I'm in the hood, I'm watching my boys get shot three, four times and they're back on the block in two weeks, three weeks, a month. I'm fucking in recovery, got my arm tied to the fucking floor, trying to get my move, movement and motion back, you know what I'm saying? So it was a, it was a, that was a crazy experience, but you're like the great, 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 great grandson of like George Washington or something. They're like, yeah. And they really explained to me like how it is at Harvard, like, She sends the daughter to come talk to me, and it's Kelly Osborne. Putting pressure on you. Putting pressure on you. It's hot. Yo, what's good, everybody? We're back, man. It's first smoke of the day, episode 92 today. We got my big dog, Zach Woods, in the building. What's good? What's good? It's your boy, Pat Gods, here, your host, here with Blackleaf. You already know. What up, what up? Yeah, man, the man, the man, 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 man of many hats, man. live from the streets. Literally, straight from the streets, fresh out the airport, ready to get it. Bro, for <laughs> real. And you brought you brought some shit. I brought, the, I brought the arsenal. I had to. You know, I think it's time for people to really... Get a get a good look at who Zach Woods is. So, dude, you got welcome. There's so many different things. And <laughs> you're a lot of artwork on the table. A lot you of got artwork. a lot of different collabs, and I like how you draw from your inspiration and thank you. Just the different creators you work with. Yeah. it's pretty dope, man. Appreciate it's inspiring. It. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed to be able to create and blessed to be able to work with other people that are also dope Creative. at creating. So they they can elevate what i'm doing we elevate each other and just put out something even more hot than what i would do by myself you know so i'm blessed to be able to work with some big cats big names and i just want to keep it rolling man keep it rolling because it's, it's going right now and everybody's fucking with it so i got a lot of products out and just keep creating more shit that's what we're doing i feel like a lot of people don't know the name but they don't know the game i feel like a lot of people know the name but don't know the man that runs the that plays that, that orchestrates this whole shit. Mm -hmm. They don't really know. They just know Zach. They hear Zach and Zach's such a friendly name. And they don't know. You know, it's like they don't know it's a real beast behind the scenes. Like I'm a beast, bro. Like I don't fucking play around. When it comes to designing, when it comes to getting my fucking shit done, I am like, I'm on sticker farmer's fucking horn. I'm on China's fucking horn. Get, let's get some shit fucking made up, bro. I'm not trying to play around. I'm investing. I'm investing in myself, investing in my brand over and over and over again till we get a bigger bag. Cause once I seen that, oh shit, I can create this fucking wave of finance for me, my family, and just go crazy. You know, I'm a broke kid from the streets of Compton, bro. So being able to touch a hundred bands, 250, go up and just keep going up. And it's like, whoa, you know, this shit gets fucking wild fast. But you have to maintain, you know, control of the whole shit too. So it's also being a, a beast, but also being, you know, a calm. You have to find the fucking, the balance, you know, the calm in the storm. So it's always on the move though. It's never, it's like, like I said, it's a never ending storm. I'm, I've been on the road for fucking damn near two years. I feel like a rapper, you know, like there's just never, Straight like up. this is my first time I'm back home in LA. I'm from LA. It's my first time home in like a year and a half, bro. I've been, I'm, I'm dying to go to my taco spot down the street. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just dying to go see some of my old friends and just, you know, just be home. You know, it has, it's yeah. been rough because it's like, I don't even, like I was saying, I don't even know where home is right now. 
I'm in so many cities and I'm all over and there's flights here, flights there. So, you know, it's good, though. It's a blessing because a lot of people ain't doing that. A lot of people stuck in their city just sitting there. What are some of the brands represented here? Like other uh, collabs? Because you got yeah. so many collabs, so many brands. Fire collabs. So we'll start with my first collab because this is my first and my probably one of my most popular favorite collabs, too. It's the cannoli. It's my hash hole. You know, everyone calls them donuts. Everyone calls them this. Everyone was calling them donuts and stuff. So I really got off the donut fucking thing because, you know, I'm a big mobster fan, mobster movie guy type shit. So when me and uh, I partnered with Roll BMC, who was, you know, by the grace of God, got introduced to him through <laughs> mutual friends. And he was just OG in the game, OG in yeah. the rolling game. I thought I was an OG. In yeah. the rolling game. When it came to, I've been rolling blunts 20 years, you know, mm -hmm. from Phillies till now. I thought I was good till I met him. And I was like, whoa, who the fuck is this little Asian kid who can just do this magic? And I'm just like, I saw the tuck tip. I saw the band. I saw the fucking elite roll. I was like, yo, this dude, the first time I smoked with BMC, bro, I felt like I was five years old. I felt like a little boy. Like everything I've been doing with these blunts all these years, not it. Now this this dude got the wave. So once I started working with him and I locked in that collab, that was like my that was the first weed product I ever put out was with Roll BMC. I skipped from putting the went from putting the stickers on the backwoods <laughs> to having a million people in America ask me if those stickers on the backwoods were really pre rolls to actually having to do a fucking pre-roll because i got kept, kept getting asked the question so much it's like no I, okay i gotta do this now now by the grace of god i was put into this this uh group chat when i started the brand it was like a lot of the legends were in there big dogs were in there so when i started zach woods they immediately supported me and pushed me and i had some big names pushing me out the gate so it was like a it was a good vibe to have that and that really made it easy for me to collab with BMC. I kind of feel like BMC was like leaning towards working with me already, but I didn't want to be like on no groupie shit and kind of like force it. I like shit to happen naturally. So I kind of let the, are these pre-rolls question just build up, build up, build up till everyone in the group chat was just like, bro, you and BMC should just drop something. And then once that became the conversation, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You know, so it kind of like just happened like that. And then went from there to just doing multiple different things. And here we have this trap box here I have with my boy Loso, who is an amazing designer in New York. He, he, he's known for customizing hats and doing hand stitch work on the hats. And he's also a beast with the uh, sewing machine. So however you want to really do it, now he's doing full print production hats with like no new era inside. Got his official, this is one of his official hats right here. You see the LA skull and bones, got the flames all the way around. You got the MLB Grim Reaper logo. You know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? So he's yeah. a he's a he's a real beast when it comes to designing. And he also is a producer, so he makes music. And um when I was just be out there in New York fucking with him, I met him in New York and he was just like a cool ass dude. And I'm looking at all this creativity. And I'm like, dude, you don't have no you don't have no weed products? Like you need you need some <laughs> weed, bro. Like you're doing fashion, you're doing music. Where's your fucking where's your pack at? You know? So he was like Fuck, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I was like, well, let me go in the lab and cook something up, you know? So I'm blessed to have a team of uh, artists and designers behind me that are just amazing. I have everything from your cartoon designer to your crazy little, you know, like he can get crazy with the splash. Or then I have this dude right here who is a flat out artist. This is my man. His name's Devin Almarinez. One, another one of my brothers, 20 years I've been working with him. And when I say he's a flat out artist, I'm talking about he's given handed paintings to the likenesses of Kobe Bryant, the Prince of Dubai, like several big, big, big names that we wouldn't even. I traveled to meet the Prince of Dubai because of this man's artwork. You know what I'm saying? So me and him have been locked in for a very long time. And anytime I get a project with a big name, oh, I call him immediately. Yo, yo, we got one. Shh go to work you know and we get in the lab and we start cooking up and what he does is uh he has this style like if you look on the side here or you see the flames right there where it says loso my boy you know the same flames that are on the hat right here you know so he kind of like tribute we pay homage you know that's one thing i do to people 
that I fuck with, I pay homage. If I see something that I like that they got going on and I want to turn you up, we're going to make you a trap box. We're going to turn you up. But this right here is called life on a canvas. So my boy takes your entire life, everything about you. We study you. We go in the lab. We go find out where your mom stayed at. We find out your old street. We find out what car you drove in high school. We find out all that shit. We go look at your Facebook and steal old photos and do all that shit and put it all into the, you know. So when I hand you this box, this is your trap box. It's a Zachwitz collab. But Loso, this is your trap box to represent you, to represent the Bronx, to represent everything you're doing with your movement and now display my weed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a fucking win-win automatically because the streets fuck with him, the streets fuck with me, and when we come together, boom, it's just power, you know? So Let's take it back to the beginning because I'm curious to know oh. how you adapted that mindset because you're taking a, a collaborative approach and including people in your workings yeah, and doing that really well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think that was the plan, but the way it just started to go. You know, I, I'm a people person. I'm tapped in in the streets. I've been tapped in the streets 20 years before Zach Woods. People know me out here. So that's what I don't think people understand. The relationships that I've formulated just throughout life. Like I said, I've traveled to Dubai to meet the prince. I've been around the world. I've, you know, I've done a lot before Zach Woods. So once I got to the point now where I can create and I can go into the lab and cook up or if I need to like go into the lab, go into my Hollywood Rolodex and pull someone out. It's nothing, you know, like I have a valid phone book of people that, you know, before weed who know me, then also the people that I've attained now that I'm doing this whole weed thing. Now that I am Zach Woods, now I have this whole other fan base of people who know me as Zach and they're a fan of that. So I have two different, you know, like really groups to work with. And they're just like, you know, everybody's, consistent with like like wanting to see more so i my guys over here just, yeah, it's just right. cooking <laughs> dr dabber yeah. shout out to dr dabber let's yeah, give him a yo, you fucking i'm gonna be the first one to do some promo for dr dabber right here because shit. Be got a dab coming to you cooking my guy dr. right dabber, here oh you. shit God yeah. love, no man. shout out dr dabber this but shit yeah. hits yeah. hard big big shout to the sponsor we're okay. going crazy out here my man's gonna uh bad, cough up along. it's good it's good. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're just, we're just talk, breaking the eggs. Talk more about the earlier years before all this. Take us way back. Like growing up way LA, back. I think for anyone that hasn't grown up LA, they want to know, up in LA, they want to know what that's like. Okay. like okay, especially yeah. like, you know, you're like you said, you're a people person. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you cover a lot of ground. I My do. best way I could put I do. it. I've you been know? a lot. I've been, a, been around a lot, been through a lot. So Growing up in L.A., I mean, I was a young kid. My family's from Compton, California, originally. You know, the hood. If you don't know, you should. <laughs> um, it's not nice. It's nothing friendly, nothing sweet. Saw a lot. Witnessed a lot. A lot of shit that sh kids shouldn't witness. Been involved in a lot of shit that kids shouldn't be involved in. Um, you know, father murdered when I was five years old. Countless cousins murdered in front of me. You know, like just crazy life, man. So it was weird going from that, that evil place where, you know, you just, that's all, you know, is sickening, evil, bad shit going on. You're always, and this is as a kid, you know? So by the time you're dealing with those emotions while still trying to be a kid, it's crazy because you hear you go first grade, second grade, you're dealing with kids who are on this happy go lucky shit. And you're just fucking coming from your father's funeral. You know, you just got gunned down in the streets or stabbed. My, my father got stabbed, actually. So, you know, it was like it was just a crazy, crazy time to be like young in L.A. But I was very much entrenched in everything L.A. So I'm blessed that the years that I was born and the years that I grew up, it was the best time to be in L.A. because we saw everything. I saw magic. I went to Laker parades. The Lakers won the championship the year I was born. And then we just won five more of that decade. So I was three, five, seven, going to Laker parades. Boom. Seven years old, fucking easy ease, fucking coming. The hottest thing in Compton, our fucking idol. I used to ride my fucking bike with my cousins to the swap meet to go see easy E perform when he was nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, wow. 
So like LA was a crazy place. I lived around the corner from the forum at one point, having access. I used to get on my bike and just ride my bike to the forum just to hopefully see magic one day, just to ride my bike. Kareem would be uh, Pat Riley, whoever, you know, but I was so close to the forum and I don't know any kid that really had that where you could just get on your bike and just ride to the forum and be that close to like what was the biggest shit in Hollywood at the time. So I was always around some big shit, not to mention too having family and in, in the music and, and sports industry too. So it's, it's just like, it's been a lot to like, to channel the hood life, then have access to the Hollywood life, then have access to the just regular life. Like I would have friends who would just trip out because I'd be one weekend. It'd be some gruesome, grotesque, gangster shit that's going on in my life come back and i'm over here with my rich family members come back and i'm over here just having cereal playing soccer with my with my soccer team you know it was like so i've been able to just move around with all these different different uh vibes going on you know as a youngster so it was it was tough though but it was definitely it shaped me it shaped me as a as a youngster it made me uh very vocal like you know you come from the fucking city of Compton, you can't be no little pussy. You can't be quiet. You can't be, you know, they're going to test you. You're going to get tested. You're going to get tested by your family members before you even, even hit the fucking street. You, you, they're my cousins used to bro, light skin, this, I was chubby. They would be on my ass, bro. But it made me so tough, bro. Like by the time I got to the point where I had my growth spurt, cause these motherfuckers, I grew up, they were all bigger than me. I was the youngest one, but they're bigger than me. Then I hit my growth spurt. Now I'm bigger than all these motherfuckers. I'm 14 though. And now you're all that little shit you were talking before. Now I can just grab you up and ain't, I'm not little, little, little man anymore, you know? So it just, it just changed up. But that's, that's the beauty of the, uh, the street, you know, it's, it's like, it'll, it'll it sharpens you, you know? So I love that shit. I'm not like ever like going to it, it gives you character, mm-hmm. you know, definitely. And like, I already had that because I come from a family of a very eccentric motherfucker. My dad was, pretty much like the king, big buff bodybuilder, scary looking motherfucker, but was the life of the party. Vibes, you know, I got pictures of him, cowboy hat on at the party, you know, he's beers, he's he's always a good time, but he's just a big motherfucker. And if he gets a little too saucy, or if you say the wrong thing, you might get smacked up, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how how it went back then. You know, that went for me too. You better fucking find my cigarettes, motherfucker. Where are my cigarettes? I can't find him, Dad. You don't come back with that answer. You better go find the motherfuckers. Find his Newports. You know what I'm saying? That's why I used to be. I'm not coming back till I found the motherfuckers. Because I'm not getting smacked, you know? And that's what we grew up with. Really, really getting your ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? But it, was, it wasn't it was just, you know, the reason. You had to you fuck up. You get fucked up. That's just what it was. And now we don't have that at all. And this is what we see with all this new weirdo shit going on with the kids now. It's like, yo, there's no ass whoopings. You know? So... I come from that old lineage of belts and switches and chanclas and all types of shit. I'm mixed, mixed, mixed culture too. So I got it from the Mexican side. I got it from the black side. It'd be fucking, you know, depending on which family member you were with that weekend. But it was a vibe though, you know, just, I love growing up in LA. It really took me to just different places because you have so much going on. The music, the sports, the commercials, the TV, the Hollywood. It's like, it's, that's that extra. That's that's, like, so, that's what I say. Yeah. I have, when I when it comes to this, yeah. I have the cheat code, bro. I grew up in L.A. in the '80s. I saw every commercial before you. I saw every fucking basketball game. I saw every fucking everything that came out. Every new shoe, new hat. What is it? If it didn't drop in New York, it's dropping in L.A. We're the two cities that get it first, and this is pre-internet. Before you yep. guys had access to just go look up and go buy it. No. Where was it at? It was in LA or it was in New York. That's it. That's a fact. And it got trickled down to all you other cities, you know? So we were the ones that really had everything. So when it comes to designing something or doing something like a uh, fashionable, like, oh, they wanted everyone's on the chrome hearts. Okay, cool. I'll do the stoned hearts, you know, cook up the little bag. Cause I know people buy with their eyes. The fashion is going to get them the whatever, Strings. the, the, Nintendo, the nostalgia of the Nintendo game, you know, the Zelda game that everyone was like, yeah, you got to do your die cut. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a die cut, but I don't have to, doesn't have to be all crazy. This is a simple square shape of a Nintendo game, but you grab this pack and what does it do? It takes you back. 
you see this, you're going to go back to the 80s. You're going to go back to that little, the little song might start playing in your head. You know, the little video you playing, all those little memories. And that's what I like to do. Like, no matter what with my, with my designs, I like to like, whatever you see. This right here is a tribute to my grandmother, right? Growing up as a kid, every time I went in her kitchen, I opened the cabinet and I would see this lady looking at me. Who is this lady? This is the Abuelita chocolate lady. I used to drink this. She'd make it for me before I go to sleep every night. Cool. Now, I see everyone with the branding. Cookies this. Candy that. Cereal this. With a Z at the end. Everything with a Z at the end. It's corny. All right. Cool. Let me go in, the, let me go in my bag real quick. I'm not going to do candies. I'm not going to do cereal. Let's go to the Mexican candies. Abuelita, one of the most legendary, you know what I'm saying? Everyone yeah. knows because of this lady. Instead of just have her holding the cup of coffee right there, take the coffee out of her hand, put the tray with the weed in her hand. Now Abuelita's holding the gas. Now she's Zach Witz, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like that. But I, I used that because my grandmother was just such an influential <laughs> person in my life. And the ass whooping she displayed, she bestowed upon me and the, the hot chocolate she would give me after the ass whoopings. You know what I'm saying? So she was a very mean lady, but very loving lady, you know? So this is, I use that. I can go back into that memory bank and pull a fucking Mylar bag out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's what this shit is. Like it's crazy like that. The bubble I, gum time Skittles. What's up with that, man? Oh yeah. This is a, a new little something me and my mans are working on over here, you know. Blessed to have my breeder in the building. I'm going to check that out. Check that out. We got that. We got No some, tray, no play. No tray, no play. The Zach Woods way. I, do, I love the trays when you're doing bags. If it you keeps didn't it. know, Ooh. if you didn't know, you know. Oh, yeah. The tray. This right here is what set set the you know set the game on fire i feel like i feel like a lot of brands started using this once they saw me come with it because being able to i had a, i had a, a couple people who you know showed me the little idea obviously seen several cookies and candies and to have this but when it came to putting the, in there with the weed and i was just like okay we're gonna keep the kind i hated when people would pull up to the session be like oh let's roll up let's roll up and then you're pulling out this Mylar bag and you got fucking nugs that have been fucking rustling around in your pocket with your keys and your cell phone all day. Pour them on the table. Oh, look, it's gas. Uh, it looks like it's been fucking smushed up all day, you know? So this is kind of like to preserve nug integrity. And then when I came to like putting the brand in the bottom of the tray, because I was like, okay, I've never seen nobody do that. Let me fucking brand the tray. So this is B known as like my thing you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna sit here and yell it i did it first because china did it first but you're gonna know zach was the motherfucker that had this shit going first so and and then using the no tray no play and putting the little tray in implementing that into the whole thing just really my way of branding it so you know it's me and then you know you're never gonna buy a bag of weed without this tray inside not for me if you got it from it don't have the zach woods tray in it it's fake you know, so, and there's plenty of that going around. So watch out. <laughs> it makes a huge difference when you have a tray in a bag. That's the one thing about having a bag is that it, things get messed up. Right. Easy. Right. And, and you know, the, the Mylar bag has been taking his fucking, taking his fucking his rib shots out here, you know, <laughs> but, I, and I, my whole thing is I've been listening and hearing everyone make their little fucking bitching about Mylars and this and that. My, every, look, let me tell you what it is about the Mylar bag. Okay. The Mylar bag is not your enemy. Your enemy is the fucking asshole outside of California who decided I'm going to take this Mylar bag and put some bullshit in here. And try and make a bag off these fucking custies that I got. That was never what California intended the Mylar bag for. We created the Mylar bag to put our best. It was a new way of presenting our weed, right? Yeah. 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. Run. Shout out to Run. Shout out to Sticker Farmer. Um, we presented the weed that way. And at no point where we. When, when did you ever see a California dude putting bullshit weed in the bag? That wasn't our MO. Our MO was this is our new way of presenting the weed to you. Ooh. No more fucking, no more Ziploc. You got a sticker, you got a, ooh, you got a, and you got gas in the bag, though. There was no fucking booth. There was no boofing the people. That's not what we did this for. So I feel like once the out-of-state people kind of got hold of the, the, the hustle that you could fucking, you could, oh, I can go put this fucking weak-ass 
eighteen hundred dollars. Buy a bunch of bags. Go alone. downtown, buy a bunch of bags. Throw some cheap shit in there. Some fake Zachwood bags. You fucking jerks. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know. Just go down there and fucking just re-rock everything and just start duping people. That's when that's when the game got fucked up. And that's who's responsible for the, this Mylar fucking epidemic. It's not the Mylar bag's fault. I feel a lot of people are just shitting on the Mylar bag. Like, oh, boofing Mylar. Boofing. Look, if there's boofing the Mylar, it's not the Mylar's fault. The weed didn't. The Mylar didn't put the weed in there. Some asshole did. So make sure you fucking give the fucking <laughs> give that asshole the fucking credit. Don't don't blame the Mylar bag. Not saying to say like I love jars too. I'm getting in my whole jar wave and shit. You know, I got my shit going out here, so I got to do a little bit of everything. Though I'm not gonna ever just be a one trick pony. You know, I got I see people doing this, do that, but then I also too when I see people doing too much of something, I like to grab the wheel and just swerve a whole different direction. You know, that's where my creative juices kind of like kick in, and I think like you said. I don't really see too many people with with my style or with my, you know what I'm saying, my drip. I don't feel like they go as hard. I feel like they just got a little Johnny designer in their fucking back pocket, pay him 300 bucks to cook up whatever design. Bro, this fucking box right here, $3,000 it cost me. I pay my fucking artist $3,000 for every trap box you see with this fucking drip on it. My fucking designer gets $3,000. So... Every time you I've, each box, each box, because it's three thousand for him to do this, to, to do all this. You, and it's you, me and him that do it because so you, and you do a new, new one for each box. I mean, each person I do a collab with, like I just did a Sherbinsky collab. I have the Grandy Flora back back here collab. I just did with them. I did one with um, Stevie Williams, pro skater. I've done, you know, I've done I got about shh, I got about 15 different boxes now, you know, so yeah, it's going crazy out here. Straight so, up. You know, it's, it's uh, the, the blessing to be able to create art is so fucking crazy because I remember just being, I've always been a fan of it, you know, fan of art, fan of just all different aspects of it too, from the painting to the, the graffiti, to whatever type of, you know, whatever you're doing, even the growing of weed, that's an art, you know what I'm saying? So like when I see like my breeder right here hitting me regularly. Zach, we got this. Zach, we got that coming down the line. And it's like, oh, and he's excited. So I get excited. You know, so it's just like, oh, shit. We're getting like, you, you're over here. I haven't even tried this yet. <laughs> I haven't even tried this yet. You, I just got it. So you you saw it. I saw it earlier, too. And I was right. I was thinking, oh, bubblegum Skittles. Oh, shit. This might be some. So we're going to see, you know, but I got a bunch of a uh, bunch of new bags coming down. So we got to have a bunch of new fucking real phenos coming down, too. It's not like no fucking re-rock shit. We don't play that game over here. You know, like a lot of people think like, oh, we can just put whatever. Like I said, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. If you got fucking 16 different bags, please have 16 different strains of weed. Don't have fucking 16 lemon cherries because I don't like that shit. When I open the bag and keep smelling the same shit and you're going to give me a different bag, but it's not a different smell. Why? That the, You're playing me for an idiot at that point. And I'm not, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm doing that to anyone. I don't want anyone to ever take a Zach with pack and be like, oh, you re, re rock this. Nah, bro. I'm really out here writing on the bag with the X's and the crew, you know, with my fucking guy right here. You guys got some shit. You're going to, you mm -hmm. know, the jars I gave mm -hmm. you guys so you guys can see what we got going on, man. But it's like, it's deep out here. You got to be, you got to be really entrenched in this life. You can't just be half-assing it, bro. And there's a, that's a, a lot of people in this game, bro that are half-assing this shit and they think they're doing it. And that's one thing I really wanted to touch on while I was here today is the fact that this is a fucking league. It's a league. It's a small league. It's a league of extraordinary gentlemen, but there's a fucking difference between the players and the owners in this league. There's 32 owners in this league. We know all 32 owners. You know, if you're an owner, you're an owner. We can all call each other. We got each other's phone numbers. We can call, talk business. We can talk argument. We can talk collaboration. We can talk whatever. But at no point can you be a player on the field and pick up the phone and call Jerry Jones or call Al Davis or call Robert Kraft. You're not doing nothing. If you're not doing nothing on that field, then they're not answering that call. Who are you? So I suggest a lot of these players that are out here in this game thinking they're doing it, Without any fucking California fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like backing or somebody that really certifying you, stamping you, get your ass to work. Get out on that field. Go make some plays. Stop acting like you're fucking King Kong because you flipped a few packs because you made a few Mylar bags. Especially if you're not from 
the hometown, the home state, you know, this is where, and I, not to knock anyone else in any other state. Cause I know it's getting going crazy all over the country and weeds going, going. I, I love it. I love how every state is becoming legal. Now everyone's getting off the fucking, you know, scary shit, but we always got to keep in mind where this shit started. You know what I'm saying? We always got to keep in mind who was really outside 2010, taking them trips, Honda Civic to Humboldt, 30 packs in the trunk, you know, really risking it out here. You know, a lot of these cats didn't really take no risk. They just see they come in the game. And I tell all these little young kids, my young homies, you guys got it good, bro. You come in the game. You guys got flavors. You got dispensaries. You got pre rolls. You got hash holes. You got all this shit. Leaves. Everything's just there for you. I mean, you guys know what the fuck we had to go through to get a bag back in the day or to fucking flip a bag back in the day or to just make a fucking simple sale. I was riding with my partners the other day, my little young homies. I'm like, you guys don't get it. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, we got it easy, bro. I'm over riding in the car. I'm like, look, you got to make a play right now. What do you do? Pick up your phone, make a fucking play. Well, if I had to make a play back in the day, what do you got to do? Beep, 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 beep. Who's this? Oh, shit. 420, 911. Shit. Who got 20 cents? Who got 20 cents? Da -da -da -da. Scramble for the change. Find the change. Where's the payphone? Where's the payphone? Oh, shit. There's a payphone. There's a payphone. Er Pull in. Hop it. All right. I'll be right there. 15 minutes. Cool. Click. Pull up. 15 minutes later. Knock on the door. He's not there. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many times <laughs> did we go through that? And when he wasn't there, what did you do? You had to just sit there and wait. Or drive to another payphone and keep calling until you figure out where the fuck he was at. That was the trap back then. I'm like, you guys, you guys got it good now. You guys and all this technology and this Wi-Fi and shit. And I'll just be busting their ass because I, I love getting on my little niggas because I'm a still, even though I'm, you know, I'm OG status now, but I'm always going to, I still fuck with the youth heavy because what I tell people all the time is like, I'm like one of the last human beings left on earth. I'm the last human being. I saw 15 years of life before the internet and I've seen every technological change since the internet. So I'm never going to be one of these old motherfuckers that, that falls out of the loop or, or stops keeping up. Cause that's how you get fucked up out here. You, I got older homies right now. They're, you know, late thirties, forties, fifties. They've given up. They're not keeping up with the times no more. The technology is like, bro, they don't know how to fucking sell and shit. You know, they're like lost out here. And I'm like, bro, you can't be out here like that. You got to adapt. Every day, every change. And that means fucking with the youth because the youth are always going to keep you up in the know of what's what. I don't care. All these old motherfuckers are old, setting their ways now. Cool. I still fuck with the kids because the kids, that's why you see me out at the skate parks. I be doing events with skaters. I fuck with the skate scene. The skaters are like my niggas for real. I don't care who you are. If you skate and you're just out there grinding, I love that shit because it's like you're really out there just working on your craft. Busting your ass, falling down, risking breaking shit, you know, just to really get up and do it again. That shit is fucking inspiring to me. And it's just motivating because, like, I've never been able to skate that good being a fucking big motherfucker with size 14 feet. It's me and skateboards don't get along too well. So I've always just been mesmerized by what they do. And I've always once I got to this point where I'm like, OK, let's brand the skate shit. Started working with Stevie Williams. Put his arm around me, you know, black CEO, That's black dope. CEO. That's big shit. Let's work. DGK, Zach was, let's get it. Bet. You know, I, I met him and me and him have been like from the first day, like brothers. From the first day we ever spoke, it was like a, like he was like meant to be my brother. So like I've had nothing but positive experiences and great business outcomes and lots of fun. You know, just everything we do is great because it's like he's big on giving back to the community. He's huge on fucking with the kids. You know, like Stevie Williams is the kids. Like Dirty Ghetto yeah. Kids is probably the most entrenched fucking uh, brand with the, with the youth. You know, especially yeah. the black youth in skateboarding. Like, we're getting kids out the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. That's dope. I go back to Compton and go back to the hoods and be in different hoods and different cities and see these fucking young black kids skateboarding. You know, you didn't see that back in the day. It was all usually white kids, but now you see fucking just all walks of life, you know, like the grimiest little, and it's dope too, because I love when I see like little young black kids with their, and they're super, you know, super athletic and 
out there playing football, whatever the fuck they're doing. But when they transfer that shit to, to the skateboard and you see a kid who's got fucking hops on the basketball court, but then he goes and does a fucking four foot ollie off a little, you're like, whoa, that <laughs> yeah, those that hops are dope. really coming in, <laughs> coming into play right now. Yeah. So it's dope, you know, it's dope to see that. But yeah, I've, I've just, uh, just been blessed, man. The collabs keep coming and got a lot of dope fucking friends who just want to, want to make money and have fun with this shit. And that's what it's about for me. I'm about having fun. I'm having more fun than I've ever had. You know, I don't have to fucking get up and do no fucking shit that I don't want to do and just get to fucking smoke the best weed with the best people and get to fucking enjoy my life, man. While motherfuckers stuck in that everyday cycle of going to fucking a job and shit. Like, I just never could do that, bro. I've never, I've had a couple jobs in my life, but I always end up choking the fucking manager or choking my fucking coworker because I'm just not going to fucking let no one talk to me like that. Really, motherfuckers be on this job acting crazy, bro. You're supposed to just sit there and take it? Like, nah, bro. Hell no. I'm a fucking yeah. six foot five, 300 pound man. You think I'm going to let fucking little, little Tommy over here just start mouthing off? I don't care if you're yeah. HR. I don't give a fuck. I tell you, motherfucker, bro. HR ends at 630, bro. You need to see you in the parking lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you talking, <laughs> talking to me crazy. I don't know who you think you are. You know what you make think this little paycheck fucking going to stop me from bringing his hand upon your fucking head. It's not, you know, and that's what I would always have to. Well, lost another job. Back to the trap. Attention, rowers, hustlers, trappers, and yes, even you, the cappers. The right carbon filter can possibly save your life. Grow generation. I ran out of vacuum seal bags. It's a Sunday. I need the single sided or the double sided all black. Grow generation. Oh, that last mom can't get transplanted because she needs cocoa and you ran out of bags. Grow Generation, in store or online. Let them know First Smoke 10. That's the code to get you hooked up. First Smoke of the Day sent you, First Smoke 10, Grow Generation. Yo, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation. And guess what? Drip Hydro storming the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what? There's a reason. Because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that. Preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine. Facility advisor, facility manager. Overall, the man with Drip Hydro. Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on, guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas. Uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to grow versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace Mood Trays is where we get our merch done. Shout out to Mood Trays, man. Moodtrays.com, FSOTD. This is where you're seeing all the gear, the custom die cut rolling tray with the ash frames. These things are impeccable. They do an amazing job. Quick turnaround speeds, low minimums on the orders as well. Any of you up and coming brands, no orders too small. Go to Moodtrays.com, use our code. You're gonna save more money and they're really gonna take care of you. They're gonna know you're part of the family. Shout out to Mood Trays, man, and uh, let's get it. I always, always go well, back. So, to what track. was it like in high school and shit? Like, when, when did you start? Like, high know? school was crazy for me too, because I was uh, involved in the you know trapping heavy, gang banging. Sports. Like when you say trapping though, like what you know trapping? I was, I was selling fucking, I was selling the Reggie, the fucking started. I started about ninth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade with the Mexican brickweed and stress. You know, it's typical fucking L.A. stress. 
You get that shit fucking, you know, whatever. Nickel bags, dime bags, 20 sacks all day. Then it got to the point where, like, when I got to my sophomore year, one of my cousins was running a fucking weed house. And he's he's older, you know, so he's running the weed house and we're at school recruiting all the kids. Now we know the difference of the prices. Now we know we get with him and we see what big bulks of weed look like. We're starting seeing the pounds and shit now. Okay. Well, fucking, we're coming every day as kids buying fucking nicks and dimes off him. Then we're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, how much is this right here? And then he tells us, the, oh, this is this. So we're just like sitting there like, bro, we can go to fucking school and just fucking tell all the fucking, because our, our, our spot was the hangout. You know, like we had no parents there. It's like my boy stayed there with his older brother. Their parents lived in Samoa. So last time I checked, can't see for the, can't see that far. You know, the kids are over here. We got weed plants going in the back. We're boxing matches after school. Fucking 40s on the wall, all the way across the wall. We had fucking nickel bag. Motherfuckers would buy nickel bags of weed. They would smoke their nick and put it on one of the leaves of the tree. Bro, at one point, our whole fucking tree was just nickel bags. Like, <laughs> it was crazy, bro. Like, we're just the young fucking hoodlums out here. But we started going to the school because me and my cousin, we got kicked out of our f- original high school and sent to the rich school. So we're now we're now going to school with the rich kids where we're just like, oh, OK, these kids got money and they want to smoke. And we got the spot. Every kid. Boom, boom. You got five. You got five. We be at school. Who wants to come through the spot? We got the spot. Five bucks, 10 bucks to get in. And we would just tell motherfuckers, give us 10 bucks and you could just smoke. You know, you're going to smoke with more weed than you can fucking imagine. It's stress. But we had fucking we'd go in the house. We'd round up 60, 70, 150 bucks, you know, go in the fucking house, grab a fucking QP off our fucking big bro. Come back outside with a fucking ounce rolling on the table like, bro, we're smoking huge. They don't know we pocketed three ounces, though. We're about to go trap that out at school tomorrow, you know. So it was just the fucking game learning the numbers. And once you learn that, it's like I was a. Uh, Junior year, I get hit by a car going 65 miles per hour. I'm literally in the, I'm now I come, I'm trapping now from that, from learning that little hustle. Now I go to my junior year, I'm full blown trapping. I'm going to my cousin's crib. I'm grabbing QPs, P's of the stress though. We're fucking running it up. I'm at school cooking, cooking, cooking. I'll never forget this shit. It was uh, right after fucking Brett Favre had just won the Super Bowl. I don't know. It was 1998. I'm walking home from school. I've just got fucking two bands. I'm two stacks at. Had two stacks in my pocket. I'm fucking seven, 16, 17 years old. About to go re-up. Feeling good. Got the new Brett Favre jersey on. Brand new Scotty Pippins laced to the fucking, you know, I'm dripping. I'm ready to go. School's getting out. I'm like, oh shit. School's about to run. I fucking snuck out of class like 30 seconds early. Just started hitting my plug like I'm on my way. Boom. I'm walking to the fucking corner to go fucking do my thing. Standing there at the light like this, half a little joint, smoking, take a hit, boom. Light turns green, I step off, and I don't remember shit else. You know, I wake up in the hospital. Wake up in the hospital, and when I wake up in the hospital, I don't, I'm fucked up. I don't know what the fuck happened. I got fucking windshield glass in my mouth. I can't move. I'm fucking neck braced up. You know what I'm saying? So I really had to get the whole fucking story told back to me of what happened. And when my boy, who was like, my boy was right there sitting in the car watching the whole thing because he's coming to pick me up. He was like, bro, you stepped off the curb and the car ran the red light going like 60 miles an hour. And he fucking hit you like you tried to like, I tried to like swerve and he he tried to swerve and he ended up just taking me straight on. Boom. And then when they hit me from the left side, but I flipped when I went, my fucking head cracked them. Went straight through the windshield, cracked right here. And then the, the windshield formed as like a, like a ramp. Launched me in the air about 13 feet, two flips. And I came down like this on my left side. I broke three fingers, wrist, elbow, compound fracture, collarbone, and clavicle all in one. You know, but when I got the compound fracture on my elbow, that's like the bone was sticking out. So I had to like fully fully recover from this fucking my whole arm had to fucking like he damn near got ripped off you know what i'm saying so it was crazy it took like two and a half years to fully recover like fucking 30 days in fucking icu peeing through a tube like real fucked up shit you know and i was just like tripping out because i'm living in the hood at the time too and i'm seeing a lot of my homies going through the gang banging shit getting shot and all this other shit and i'm laid up in the hospital from the car accident 
30 days in ICU, bro. That's a long time to be in ICU. If you've ever been, if you ever know, you ICU is supposed to be quick. Get you in, get you out. I had a fucking, when I finally got out of that shit, I had to learn how to walk again. Like my legs didn't work, you know, cause I'd been laid up for 30 days. So it was a crazy experience. And then having a full two and a half year recovery process. So it was like, I had to go through this whole fucking therapy thing, you know, where I'm like watching, I'm in the hood. I'm watching my boys get shot three, four times and they're back on the block in two weeks, three weeks, a month. I'm fucking in recovery, got my arm tied to the fucking floor, trying to get my move, movement and motion back. You know what I'm saying? So it was a, it was a, that shit was a crazy experience, but that really took me to from hardcore trapping. I was my first, first taste of big money. And not big money, but two thousand dollars when you're fucking seventeen, you know, you're fucking doing you're doing all right. So we get that rolling and then I get hit by the car. So now I'm out the game for a good fucking two years. You know, I'm in recovery mode. But by the time I turn 18, I got a bag waiting for me. Cause I done went to court and Larry H. Parker got me 2.1 million, all that. Not 2.1 million, but he got me some bread. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Larry H. But um when I fucking turned 18, you know, I had a bag waiting for me. And I now I'd been around weed. I've been around weed already at, at that point. I've been selling weed. Before I even started selling weed too, I was I was a fucking before I ever started with the with the the stress, I was a fucking roller. Like I was a part of the assembly line for the stress breakup. My cousin had the fucking six man deseeding line where you're taking out this nigga takes the first row of stems and seeds. Then it gets a double and triple bypass to make sure you're getting the, you know? So before I ever knew how to, before I ever smoked weed, I rolled a blunt. I used to roll blunts and do know how to fucking bust down the Swisher. Shout out to the movie kids, you know, crack the Swisher open like that. And just, you know, and the, and the Philly blunt. So that was like big for me. But when I took that two year hiatus and I came back to, when I turned 18, I had that bag waiting for me. I was like, okay, I was seeing the, the transition from shitty weed. Now, now the chronic was here. The, the $50 eighth or $60 eighth was born. And now my friends are all piecing up on a fucking eighth. 10 dudes on an eighth. 10, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Let's get an eighth. And let's go to Venice Beach. Let's get a glass pipe. Ooh, a chillum. Ooh, it was like the hottest shit ever. You know what I'm saying? Like going to Venice Beach to get your first pipe was like fucking a rite of passage in this weed game. You're you're at Venice. You're grown now. You're now you're you're not the little kid no more. You're at the big dog fucking big spot. You know, you walk out. That was like one of the spots back in the day where you could really blow freely. It wasn't a big deal, you know, so we'd be out there at Venice, you know, like going crazy. And just get our little fucking chillin' piece and get our little eighth of fucking, you know, some, we had some like bubble gum or some other like little white widows and shit back in the day. And we would fucking, you know, like, oh, bro, save me some greens, save me some greens. Like if you ever heard your boy say, save me some greens, that means you guys are smoking. You guys are definitely piecing up on the eighth. Yeah. You know, motherfucker, you better save me some greens, bro. <laughs> so that was, that was like crucial. I know niggas got their ass beat because they didn't save somebody. Bro, I put 10 bucks on the eighth, bro. What the bah? You know, like, fuck that. You know, like this shit was crucial back then, back then. Cause it was like, we were broke. We're broke ass kids, you know, ever given our little lunch money to get our little, get our little high on you're sacrificing lunch so you can smoke some dank, you know, like, fuck it and go steal some fucking hot pockets at 7-Eleven later. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> you know, we're going to eat regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, food was never an issue. I remember going $12.13 and the next day he, I'd go 13, he'd go 12. Oh yeah. And bro. we would just switch to get we, a half bro. eighth, 25. Half eighth, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> The half eighth. I remember when the, the eighth and I remember the half eighth, bro. God. I Everyone wants that one point. I used to hate those fucking custies, bro, for <laughs> fucking real. That was one fucking person that used to always piss me off, bro. You the half eighth. Bro, what the fuck is that? I was uh, bro, I'm not weighing out no fucking 1.75 for nobody, bro. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but that shit was fucking hilarious. If anyone asks you for a half eighth now, smack the shit out of them. Tell them, Zach. That's from Zach. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. Yeah, man. But it's a lot going on in the youth. Once I got to the high school shit, it was come out of that, go to college. Now I'm fucking around with uh, Cerritos College out here, uh, playing football, playing basketball. And that's when really shit got really deep with the now we're in the gas. We're grabbing peas. We're fucking flipping shit in college. We got the fucking trap house right across the street from the school. 
And it's just booming, you know, like fucking big fucking steaks, big fucking dinners. You know, now we're shopping, getting all the fancy gear. I got the bag behind me now, too, because I got the car accident money. So but what I did with that is like once I saw this eighth shit, I was like, I'm when I got my money, I'm like, I'm never going to be one of these dudes that just buying eights every day. I'm going to go drop a couple bands and let's go get this shit rocking. You know what I'm saying? So I just turned my fucking hood up with my fucking car accident money and really just never looked back. I really laughed in the face of everyone because I'm sure you probably heard this when you were young too. Oh, you can't sell weed forever. Can't sell weed forever. And I'd be like, motherfucker, as long as this phone's ringing, I'm doing my thing. And I don't care what you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like my shit was like, I had the shit booming my whole neighborhood. And it was like, I lived in a, I lived in a multi-ethnic where I had the white, black, and Latino fucking aspect. So I had every type of stoner around me. It wasn't like where some people live in just black neighborhoods or, you know, I had every type of stoner around me. Once I moved out of the hood hood and I was kind of living in like East LA, Whittier area, Pico Rivera, you know, that type of shit. So I was, I, I lived everywhere in LA too. That's another thing. I've lived everywhere in the city from Malibu. I used to do bodyguard work for Kevin Federline and Britney Spears. You know, I lived in Malibu. I was, I was Britney Spears and fucking Kevin Federline's bodyguard. I was getting chased down by National Enquirer and fucking all these niggas, like shit like that. So that's I lived crazy. In, I lived in the fucking, <laughs> I lived in fucking Cross Creek. Off like I said, PCH. you cover a lot of ground. Yeah. It does cover a lot of ground. I'm bro. actually not, st- not that surprised. That yeah. No, nah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's bro. That's what I but tell people. Like, give us, a, give us a few crazy stories about just doing bodyguard work or anything like that. Bodyguard work. Okay. We used to have this thing you back, see in, some shit, back yeah. in the day when, uh, you know, back in the, I'd say MySpace days. Mm-hmm. It was probably uh, those days were the shit, man. Yeah, we would have them. I remember when you could first first put your little, you could change your little emotion of what you were feeling and like put a little status of like what you were up to. So like me and K Fed, we'd be at the crib and Brittany be like I'm fucking touring like Monaco or some shit, and like K Fed would be like topless Tuesdays at the crib you know <laughs> and just fucking send that out on the little myspace tag topless tuesdays bro we'd be fucking yamming fucking you know fucking go crazy at the 25 million dollar mansion with fucking two gates and a fucking mile long path to get to the fucking driveway yeah wild and topless tuesdays <laughs> topless tuesdays and fucking britney she didn't know about that she didn't know but she <laughs> might know now Shout out britney, what up? she know you know we smoked i smoked with britney before so she's yeah. chill it's not no fucking big thing but she knows big know, zach yeah, they know because I used to be all up in the fridge, all up in the fridge at Britney's <laughs> big fridge, fridge like fridge door like as big as this wall right here, bro. I'm not even lying. I was blown away. I'd open the fridge, be like every fucking snack in the world in there. Holy shit! What year was this? This was 2007, 2007, Damn. 2008 ish. Right around yep. the, right after the right before. Right, I think when they just had the first kids, they've just had their first kid. So shit's still popping at this point. Oh, it's popping. I'm full blown. I'm full blown. I'm I'm like they probably got a ton of ton of staff, ton of people there. Oh, bro, like, it was crazy, bro. And yeah, buddy's just and buddy's up, just straight up I used to, top of I used to, I used to, I used to go, I used to go yeah. get his I used to rip to the liquor store in his whip to go get his fucking cigarettes. And I used to have to I used to have to take he'd have a he had a fucking Ferrari with the with the fucking the big ass brake pads that said Fetterline in the Ferrari font. And I would fucking have to go to the store and get his fucking cigarettes and shit, cause you know, like we'd be out there fucking doing the thing. Like yeah. <laughs> he's the ultimate baby dad. Me and my, my one of my boy, my he caught my, a check off my that other boy, uh, Rich Rocker. He's one of my one of my rapper homies from the Bay. He was we was right there. He was actually writing rhymes for Kevin Federline, and we were you know, so it was like yeah, all one big conglomerate yeah. thing that was going on. But it was all based off of just mutual relationships we had. In Los Angeles, it ain't what you know, it's fucking who you know. In this game, in this world, in this city, in this business, in this life. I don't care what the fuck they tell you, bro. You can go to school. Every motherfucker I've known go to school. Matter of fact, it was funny. I had a friend during this time. It was popping. My life was crazy. I'm coming home every night, fucking Hollywood, five in the morning, drunk as fuck. Shouldn't be driving, driving anyway, whatever, you know? But I'm fucking allegedly, allegedly, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I remember, I remember specifically, I would come home and I would always see that at four or five in the morning, I had a boy who would fucking be up taking fucking three buses to go to Loyola Marymount University. He'd be up at five in the morning every day, every day. And I'd be coming home and he'd be right there. And I'd be like, yo, 
this motherfucker is crazy, bro. Because whatever the fuck he's getting up to go do at five in the morning, Loyola Marymount, all this shit, I'm like, bro, that shit better be worth it. That's what all you used to say. It better be worth it because you just motherfuckers up early. Three buses through L.A. from Whittier to fucking up to wherever Loyola's at in Hollywood or L.A. Like, oh, my God. And sure enough, I'd be like, yo, years later, never saw anything come of the degree. Never saw anything and eventually saw my boy working at like a fucking restaurant and shit. And I'm just like, bro. You were fucking up at 5 a.m. every day. What happened? Nothing. He just, nothing bad happened, but you would think of a he didn't motherfucker. Go for it. He didn't, he didn't, whatever the degree he got. I mean, see, the issue with school is they don't prepare you with experience. Mm-hmm. There's no experience. It's just fucking. You can't learn if you don't It's just kick experience. you off the cliff and fly. School should be like a pairing with like active role in a big company or like some type of situation that you're looking to you know, Mm -hmm. aspire to be in like nothing. Yeah. It's dated and the shit's useless. Like I, I have a younger sibling now and I told him like, yo, it's, if you want to go, it's for the network and the people you'll meet and the experience. I recommend that. Take your, take your hustler mind with you because you're not going to go learn nothing in business. You're not going to learn. You're not going to come out and have any fucking job waiting for you. You're not going to learn nothing about branding, marketing, design, none of the shit that you're going to actually have to do. If you want to start even a landscaping company, you got to learn all the shit. You got to, you know, and it's crazy for me because like me, like I said, I didn't go to school or have any, you know, I've never done any of this. It wasn't those. This was never, Anything but that you're I've not done. scared to try but shit. But I'm not scared to try shit. shit. I'm not scared to invest. And what I what I what what I saw when I moved, I moved from LA in 2015. I moved to the Bay, moved to San Francisco. So when I did that and I really started hanging out with my man right here on Hate Street, and we're we're over here chilling, and I'm kicking it on the block, and I'm seeing a bus drive by with a fucking weed fucking ad on it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like looking up and I'm seeing fucking the billboard with a fucking weed ad on it. Okay. I'd never seen that in LA. And then I'm fucking driving across the Bay Bridge and I see fucking Corova has the biggest fucking ad space where fucking Yahoo has that fucking sign now. That used to be a fucking Corova fucking sign. What? A fucking edible company has the biggest fucking billboard space in the Bay? That was fucking crazy to me. And I'm like, yo, this marketing shit's gonna get wild. If this and I remember when I got my first Corova bar too, the packaging fucking scared the life out of me because it was like a thousand milligram fucking bar. Mm-hmm. And on the back, it had this fucking crazy ass like barbed wire fucking font that was like, do not eat more than two pieces at a time or you will be fucked up. Like whatever it said, but it was just like it looked all fucking scary. I'm like, yo, this thing is no joke. And I remember fucking biting into that thing. like fuck it. I'm going to just. Arr. And it took me down, bro. It took me down. I was like, no, nah, I shouldn't have done that. You know, the Corolla was no joke. So that was my real first, int- that was the first brand that I saw. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, bet. Now I come fast forward, come meet my man Issa on Hate Street. We're kicking it out there, doing our thing. I'm seeing everybody pulling up. Now I'm seeing the first Runtz bag and the first Mylar and the first I'm seeing, obviously Cookies had it had their little, you know, the blue bags first. But when I started seeing the sticker bag outside on the street and niggas are pulling up on Hate Street, trapping them, I'm like, oh, okay. This is what the, this is what the game's going to. And I really, it was funny because when we get into we can go ahead and get into this now. How, how I fucking started Zach Woods. Cause I was actually living in the Bay and I had this fucking old fucking homie that I used to buy my OG off of back 20 years ago. And he's the first fucking cat who ever pulled up on me with a pound. Cause back, back then I couldn't buy a pound. I could only get like four ounces at a time. OG was real scarce, you know? So like, I'm like, cool. My boy pulled up, served me the pee. It was all good. We maintained a fucking long, long relationship of me selling fucking OG. That's how I met Shaggy. That's how I met, you know what I'm saying? Full circle to that, right? So I come to the Bay and one day I'm in the Bay just chilling. And, you know, obviously me and my guy, we kind of like, we didn't out, I didn't outgrow him, but I kind of, I moved away. So like, you know, I wasn't really, you know, grabbing shit off him. I hadn't talked to him maybe a couple years, but all of a sudden one day he calls my phone and he's like, yo, what's good? G, you still in the Bay? I'm like, yeah, I'm up here. What's good? I'm in Frisco right now. Pull up on me. He's like, bet. He's like, I'm an hour out. I'm pulling up with my boy. Cool. Pulls up. Fucking hop in the car with these dudes. He's like, what's good? 
Fucking white dude in the front. What up, bro? Fucking say what up to my boy. Oh, that's my boy right here. Sour Waves. Oh, what up? I don't know who he is. I never heard of him. Never, never know what a Sour Waves is. Nothing. But just start talking. Shooting the shit. We're driving around the bay busting plays. It's the first day I ever met Waves. And we're fucking kicking it. We're laughing. We're talking shit. I'm like seeing that he knows his shit about the game. And I'm like, we're just listening to what he's saying. I'm like, okay, you got a little OG status. My boy's obviously an OG. I'm 20 years in with him. So when the fucking, the ride ends and we fucking separate ways, I fucking, you know, I tell the fucking waves. I'm like, yo, I'm like, what's good? I'm like, let me get your, let me get your IG. The most famous fucking, let me get your IG ever. Fucking go on this dude's page. Now I have my own page at the time. I wasn't a brand or anything. I just had my personal page, but I made a lot of fucking memes and I made a lot of memes about a lot of different topics, all topics. Actually, I didn't fucking hold back on anything, but there was one topic that I never really touched on is because I was afraid to offend people. It was the weed community because I knew people in the community and I didn't want to, you know, I knew some of the shit that was going on, but I didn't know. I didn't want to ruffle no feathers like that. So when I meet waves and I ask him what his IG is and we split waves and I go fucking scrolling in my phone and looking at his fucking page and just start fucking looking at what the fuck he's doing. Oh my God. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker don't give a damn. Everything that I've wanted to say, he's saying it. And I just hit him. I'm just like, yo. And I guess at the same time, he might have been scrolling my page because we literally text each other like an hour after we like, yo, bro, you're fucking fucking hilarious. And he's like, yeah, I was scrolling your page. You're pretty fucking hilarious too. I'm like, yeah. So then he was living in the Bay at the time. So then me and him, he just started. He's like, oh, you live out here? Cool. So we just started hanging out. Me and Waves, he's pulling up on me. He took me to my first fucking $300 fucking dab dinner where everyone walked in. And I'm like, what the fuck? He told me, yeah. He told me, it's like, it's 300 bucks. And I'm like, well, 300 bucks for the dinner? I'm thinking we're going to like some fancy restaurant or some shit. I'm like, okay, fuck it. $300 dinner. We lit. I walk in. It's just like a fucking table like this with just hella rigs on it. Bunch of fucking dabbers in there. And then Waves walks in and everyone just starts applauding and shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? This motherfucker, like the meme lord has arrived. Yo, I need my money back, man. Right. I was about to say, no one waves. That shit was all comped. Bro, it was like, bro. So then like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm in there expecting to pay the 300 and then we just sit down and I see the fucking round of applause when he walks in. I'm like... I mean, ain't paying no fucking 300 bucks. These fucking people are going to, they're going to hold this. You know, yeah. I'm in my mind. I'm on my hood shit. Like, no, nah, hey, I ain't giving up 300 of these. But then they were sure enough. They were just like so happy to have him there. Like they didn't even give a fuck about bread. But I literally was so fucking funny. Like we just started really connecting. And then it was funny because then we would just be messaging each other, just random images, random memes and random shit that would just be funny. And he would send me something and I would add to it and send it back to him and he'd add to it and boom, and then he'd post it or tag us or whatever the fuck, you know? So one day he sends me the fucking, a meme of, of, of Zach and Slater and they're fighting over a fucking basketball. And then fucking, I fucking came up with the name, like, or he, he puts the name like two stack Zach and I put the name like pay you later Slater. And then fucking, he sends it back to me again with the basketball and he's like, those fronted packs you'll never see again. And it's like, bro, we posted that and fucking hell broke loose. When people heard the name Two Stack Zach and Pay You Later Slater, bro, everyone was just like, bro, I know a Two Stack Zach. I know a Pay You Later Slater. Of course you do. Of course you do. That's why we made that name because we were playing off the, you know, one, and once I, once I saw what Waves was doing, I'm like, okay, we're going to engage in this. I'm going to fucking, I'm going in now too. Because fuck it, you know, he's doing it, we're doing it. So then I started using that, I'm like, we'll just start using Saved by the Bell for everything, for the memes. This is pre-Zackwood still. This is pre-Sticker, any of that. We're just making memes. But the names, when we came with the Pay You Later Slater, and then we dropped the girls, Light Debt Lisa, Cannabis Influencer Kelly, everyone was just dying because what, what were girls doing at the time? Every girl, <sighs> Blowing out with their fucking tits out, you know, like doing the same shit they do. So fucking every girl is trying to be a cannabis influencer. So I'm like, oh, okay, this fits perfect. Rig Ratchet Jesse for all my dab dab chicks. You know what I'm saying? High Temp Tori. She's another dab chick. The one that rocks the e-nail. You know, we just gave everyone a name. 
Booth Master <laughs> Building, Mid Smoking Max, Scheme and Screech. Everyone I had a fucking name. Yeah, everyone had a name. And we even went, we even went the extra mile and gave, you know, the other characters. Remember the fucking when Zach goes to fucking the Malibu Sands when he goes to work with Mr. Carosi. That that's the best part. That's right. one of the best ones. So we had Cart Flipping Carosi, and then we had Strictly CBD Stacy, his daughter. So, you know, I I literally sat down and gave each character from the show. Mind you, I love this show. Saved by the Bell. Classic. Is the Watch reason it every the, morning before school? Every morning, every, and it was like, bro, I'm a trap nigga. So, the brick phone. This is why the brick phone is synonymous because I've always been, I've always had a pager. I had a pager before any fucking kid in my class had a pager. They knew I was trapping. It was what it was, right? My mom knew what it was, whatever. So had the fucking, you know. But the brick phone, having the pager was one thing. Zach pulled up at school with the brick phone and answered that motherfucker in class. When I saw that, that's what blew my mind. That's what made me fall in love with that show because he was the coolest of the cool. Who the fuck is a kid and has this phone in the 90s? You know how expensive that was? Who had phones like this back in the day? Businessmen. That's it. And if you listen to, you remember the show, Uncle Zach's dad was a businessman who traveled a lot. So the reason why Zach had the phone was because the dad was always on the road and I always had to reach him. So it was like, I'm so mesmerized by this shit. And I'm just like, yo, Zach's cool as fuck. Mind you, he had the drip. You know what I'm saying? Sassy, smart ass at school was like me. He was like me. He reminded me of me. Just the fucking white blonde kid. You know what I'm saying? So I would always fucking take to that shit. And when I saw that it was time to build my brand and I watched all the different themes that people were using and different shit that people were using, I'm like, nobody's using Saved by the Bell. And I knew right off the rip, I'm like, if you do use Saved by the Bell, you got to go. You got to do it right. This is not something you can half-ass. You can't play around. You know, I got to do every character. I got to do a, you know, I just showed you the fucking cover for every character. Every one of those fucking stick were stickers that were going on different flavor backwoods. You know, and I'm sitting up there on Hate Street. Boom. With a fucking CVS. Anyone fucking who knows Zach Woods, who knows me from the beginning, they know. I was out there, CVS basket with a Zach Woods sticker over the CVS, literally serving $20, $20. I'm standing in front of a smoke shop that sells fucking backwoods inside. Shout out to my man Issa right here. Sells fucking backwoods inside, and they're refusing to go inside and buy those backwoods, and they're walking outside and buying them off me, some trap nigga who's leaning up against the car with a CVS basket with, with a sticker on it. Paying twenty dollars because mine look cooler, and they're twice the price. I was like, "Yo, I got something here." You know what I'm saying? That's when I knew the power of branding, the power of marketing is crazy, and I knew that because one I, one reason I knew I was gonna kill him because I knew nobody had seen anything Saved by the Bell related in fucking thirty years. Nothing worth fucking. I've seen a couple little shitty remixes of the logo. That's nothing. Who's fucking gone that deep, though, to fucking right, tear up every yeah. character? Gucci drip out. I got Mr. Belding with the off-white hat with the rolly on with the bottle of Henny in his hand on the pack. Like, what? Mr. Belding, nigga, Belding's cool. Belding's always been cool, though. Yeah. If you really know him, he's really outside in these streets. I hear about it. Dennis Haskins? It. Oh, he's outside. I hear Ask about Squints it. about it. Squints got, <laughs> Squints, Squints got stories. Squints got Belding stories, bro. Squints, oh, Squints got Belding. Squints, yeah, Squints yeah. told me, it was funny when he told me too, he was like, bro, you know, be the celebrities. We were outside, you know what I'm saying? Me and Belding were, we were outside at one point. I was like, yo, he's like, he used to invite me to shit. He'll be like, dude, he's like, Belding was an animal, bro. I'm like, yeah, I don't doubt it. I've seen the pictures of him just shit faced in Hollywood. You know, like, he's good. He's out here. It's crazy to me that some people will know Squints and not know like he's the kid from the sand lot. right right and i've had to explain that like you know the kid in the sand lot that's him right people are like really yeah and i'm, I'm like yeah. bro what are you talking like that's yeah no, i've it's had just, several it's people i've actually had i just did an event out in uh in houston with them i had them come out there to houston right after they won the world series because you know i'm a fucking branding nigga so i'm like all right <laughs> how are we gonna play off this they just won the world series what can we do let's throw a fucking squint sesh make some trap lot hats you know what i'm saying brand new trap boxes brought the flavors out yeah Fire see the trap too. lot hat right there that's my custom limited edition new era fitted cap with fucking hits on every panel we get the fucking classic fucking pf flyers fucking throwback right there 
you know, it makes you trap harder and run faster <laughs> 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 when you wear the fucking trap lot hat. So, uh, yeah, man, that was just like, it was just fucking, it was amazing, bro. Just to be able to fucking cook that up and just, man, go crazy with all this different. So as you're rolling out, like the Saved by the Bell stuff, Zach Wood cr- is created. Where, where are you at at this point? You're still in the Bay? Uh, no, I'm not in the Bay right now. I'm actually, I, I, no, I meant like at this point. Like when you started Zach Woods. Oh, oh like, when I started? Yeah, yeah, I was in the Bay. I was living in San Francisco. So what happened was, funny story is like, I came home from making memes one day with Waves. We're fucking shooting the shit back and forth. And we're now the two-stack Zach and the pay you later Slater thing is, is going. Everyone knows the names, whatever, whatever. We're memeing it up. It's funny. So I'm standing in front of my crib one day and this fucking little white kid pulls up in a fucking SUV. And he fucking hops out the SUV and he's got a fucking duffel bag and a cookies hat on. And he's a little thugging, you know, cat, whatever. But I see him with the duffel bags. I already know what he's, you know, what he's on. So when I pull, I whip my phone out and I start fucking filming him, you know, and I'm filming him like this. And he's like, he fucking comes around the car and he looks at me and look at him and kind of like making sure I'm not a jack boy. You know, he's like, it's good. It's good. Throw him the nod. But I'm filming him and then I upload it to Instagram and I put the caption. I'm like, when two stack Zach pulls up with fucking blue, uh, blue dream, but he tells you it's blue cookies, you know? And then fucking it's just, I posted it, bro. And swear to God, like everyone in the Bay, it happened to be that dude that I posted. It happened to be a little, a local trap dude in the Bay that, that was fucking with the, with the Mylar bags and the run shit. He was, I didn't even know this, right? He's my next door neighbor. He sees this fucking, this meme starts circulating throughout the Bay area motherfuckers throughout the, all the Bay Area started hitting me like, bro, you know who that is? Bro, you just memed one of the fucking, oh, that's funny as hell. Like, bro. I'm like, bro, I didn't know who that is. I'm like, who is it? And then they, then they send me his Instagram. Then later on in the day, that dude hits me on Instagram like, yo, that was funny as fuck earlier. I thought you had the pistol, but you know, I'm glad you were just making memes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I was just trying to get you fucking in your, in your fucking natural state. So like, he ends up fucking telling me, he's like, you live right here? I'm like, yeah, I live right here. He's like, come over, you know, when you're done, come back, come through. I'll show you some shit. I go in this crib and this is the first time I walk in the crib and really see the fucking stacks of runts bags, pink runts, white runts, Georgia pie, fucking Hawaii runts, whatever. The, you know, this was like, whoa, you got hell of fucking bags. I've seen Mylar bags before, but you're the Mylar guy or what? You're the fucking. Then I start seeing all the packs of the exotics. I'm like, oh, shit, this motherfucker really got a booming over here and i'm like he's really fucking with the run shit heavy so this was my like real intro to like okay now i'm seeing now he's my next door neighbor and i'm looking every day now i see the traps booming right next door to my house i didn't even realize it but now i'm like oh 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 now i'm seeing every play people coming in mylar bag this mylar bag that no one's buying the pound without the 64 mylars i'm like oh shit okay so this is when i start going Back to my little apartment, and I'm in a little one bedroom fucking room that I'm renting from fucking some Mexican family in San Francisco because I'm broke and thugging. But fucking, I just started fucking cooking up my little ideas with Zach and cooking up my shit. And then little by little, when I just took it out to Hate Street, and then Sour Waves putting me in this group chat with a bunch of big players in the game that really supported my shit when I first got started, that was just a chain reaction. So I had the streets, hate street, especially, which is like the block in Frisco. If you're doing anything branding, you're not on hate street. No one fucking cares. You know, you got to be outside moving, shaking, handing out stickers, slapping up the fucking stickers on the pole. Make sure you got a sticker on the ATM and fucking puff, puff pass. If you don't, you're nobody. That's just how it felt. So I felt like everyone I'm walking in and I'm seeing this shit like, yo, before I had my stickers and my brand, I was getting envious because I wanted that. I wanted to be my own. I'm, I'm like, this is a way out for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shit, like all these other dudes are doing it and they're not doing it good as me. That's what I felt. And I feel like anyone who don't have confidence like that in yourself, you don't need to be in this game. But I just knew for a fact that when I got in the lab and I got able to fucking cook up some shit, my shit's going to hit differently. And like I said, that's why we talked about the unorthodox past, path that I traveled to where I'm at. I, I, I agree. I don't think anyone has gone about it this way. There's several ways that people have gone about it in this game, but I don't see anyone who's done 
done it the way I've done it. And I don't think anyone can. You really got to have a lot. Like you said, you got to have mouthpiece. You got to have your fucking, you got to have street smart. You got to have wisdom of all this shit that was all this branding shit. You got to be able, you had to see it. People ask me, how do I go in my bag so easily? It's because I saw this, bro. I sat in front of a TV and watched every Ninja Turtle episode and every fucking Al Bundy episode and every fucking news story that broke and every Fox undercover and every fucking car chase and every, you know what I'm saying? Every fuck on top of the fact that there was motherfuckers getting shot outside my house. So like I'm seeing a lot where it's easy to go in my bag. It's easy to go make a boys in the hood bag or go grab something from any aspect of that era in the nineties, whether it be music, movies, food, snacks i can go back and i, I was gonna do the fucking throwback fucking batman and joker taco bell cups remember the fucking the the taco bell when they when they're <laughs> that's a fucking throwback jack nicholson on the taco bell cup bro. those were the good old days those were the good days bro yeah. that was when taco bell still tasted good shit i Even can't eat when that Mickey, shit now back in the day when mickey d's would put like the actual dope toy in yeah, the thing dope, bro they stopped all that bro, my, and they do collections like my, drops. like look the dopest toy <laughs> is funny the dopest toy collection to me from McDonald's was the Muppet Babies collection, right? So this this dropped in like the 90s. I'd say like 92, 93. I was a young kid. But I was in the process of collecting them because you get one with every Happy Meal, right? And you get They had fucking Kermit and Fozzie and Gonzo and Animal. He had all the little gang. So I'm trying to collect them all. And I'm like catching fucking two fucking Miss Piggies or two fucking Kermits. You know, I can't fucking, I'm, I'm six Happy Meals deep and I can't get the game, you know? So then all of a sudden the fucking LA riots break loose, right? This is 92. I'm a kid. I'm living in fucking South Central at the time. Fucking riots break loose. My fucking cousins are all fucking older than me. Gangbangers, Crips and shit. They're out in the streets looting. They're looting. They're with the 18, 17, 18 year old crowd. So they're up there doing their thing in the street. So I'm coming home. I come. They're like coming to the crib. Yo, what you want? What do I want? Everything. Nigga, go get me all the fucking video games, Jordans. Nigga. I didn't know that this was like a real thing. I thought they were fucking with us because like we're seeing the shit on TV, but we're like, is it real? But we're also right around the corner where we see the fucking fire from Crenshaw and shit burning. And we know it's real. We know the national guard is coming. Like I got fucking to see the national guard for real. All this other shit. You people talking about deploying the national guard. No, I'm talking about motherfucker. AKs outside my house, get inside 6 PM curfew. You know, it was real outside in the fucking, in the trenches when, when the riots broke loose. So my cousins come home with fucking later that night. After we had that conversation, they come home with all the fucking, mcdonald toys in the bucket <laughs> bro i'm talking about and i had like six pair of jordans to go with it so i'm yeah. talking about i got my first fucking jays and my first fucking mcdonald toy collection from the fucking la riots i'm loving life bro i'm like bro go back yeah <laughs> go get some more shit like you know i'm yeah. not knowing the you know the gravity of the situation as far as the race relations kind of i did but fucking, I was still kind of young, you know what I'm saying? But I, I was so, the fact that, you know, you're a kid and you have six pair of Jordans, you know how it was to get one pair, ask for one pair of Jordans could get your ass whooped in the hood back when I was a kid, just asking, you know what I'm saying? You better have some straight fucking A's. You better be want some fucking Jordans, motherfucker. Ain't coming around here where you get those fucking pro wings and get the fuck up out of here, you know, go play kickball with the rest of these little dudes. But that was, a, you know, so it was like, it was a crazy time just fucking growing up in that whole that whole era, but that really showed me a lot about the branding, bro. It showed me a lot about how people market this shit. It's like, it's crazy. What's a one big difference about the Bay versus LA? Now you've lived in Oh, both. I love this question because when I moved to the Bay, one thing I'll say about the Bay is they take their fucking baseball very fucking seriously. And I mean, very seriously to the point where like, you know, we're from LA. Every fucking, everybody wears a different fucking hat. Different hat means different things. Different, you know what I'm saying? No, no, nobody's wearing a fucking Phillies hat because they're a fucking Phillies fan in LA. You know what I'm saying? So when I got to the <laughs> Bay and I'm like, you know, I rock P hats, Cincinnati Reds hats. I rock a few different hats, you know? I might rock a Dodgers hat, like, because I'm from LA. I don't follow baseball. I don't even like baseball. But I know this is the crown. 
So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to rock the LA hat, you know, especially, you know, the fucking, I know the little Bay LA fucking tension, but I also feel like, you know what I'm saying? There's not really a big deal. Like they're not making a big deal about it up there, but the people who did make a big deal about it were the fucking baseball fans. When I would be, it would be a fucking problem for a Giants fan to see me in Frisco with the fucking, with the, yeah, I could understand the LA hat. I could understand that, but they would press me when I would have the Phillies hat on or they, oh, you're a Phillies fan? No, bro. I didn't even, I wouldn't even be realizing I'm, what? Oh shit, I'm wearing the Philly hat. What? You got a problem with this? Like, I'm, I thought I moved away from this. You know what I'm mean? saying? I thought I got away from having to worry about what hat I was wearing. You know what I'm saying? But it was funny in the Bay. Like, that was one thing. And they would always, Bay Area people always love to ask if they think LA is better. And I would always have to tell them, like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Give them what they want. I'm sorry. Give them what they want. I, look, you guys got the best weed. But we got the better lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? It's, it is what it, it's give and take. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing personal. Like, yo, I've had great times in the Bay. The one, thing I, the one thing I will say about the Bay is I love the tranquility and peace that I have there where I don't have that here. You know, I'm in L.A. I'm from I'm in this city, bro. I have nine different nicknames depending on what part of the city I'm in. You know how that feels, bro? I literally before I moved out of here, I used to test myself. I used to try and walk to the store. I used to just, I'm going to walk to the store. I could never get to the store because somebody would drive by that I knew and would see me walking and be like, gee, what you doing out here? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you doing walking out here? You know? And it's like in LA, you don't be walking around like that. You know, shit can happen. So his is like, somebody's always quick to scoop you up. Whereas like, dude, you can't ever just go for a walk, you know? And it's like, sometimes you just want to walk a up. mile. I was you know? just telling, so I was just telling people about this. So like, you're always on the treadmill. Yeah. You ever just go take a walk? It's like, you can't fucking walk around LA. It's crazy. It's crazy out here. And this is the crazy. You got to go what? to like the reservoir. You got to like go somewhere to walk. You yeah. You got to go to a, like you a, like a, a, running a, open, a, a padded, <laughs> a padded fucking running surface somewhere where there's like a lot of fucking white ladies and spandex. They laugh when they say in LA, <laughs> LA is the only place that you don't like go downtown. Like you, Bro, you we just we just around, we just but... bent the block. We just bent the block on Skid Row on Sixth Street. My boy right here was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Bro, this Skid fucking road. It's a movie. What do you mean? I'm gonna get stabbed by a hyper hypodermic needle out here. You better yeah. lock your fucking door and keep your hands in the vehicle. If you want to know yeah, what the yeah, end like, of the world is gonna look like? You come out here on six Bro, six yeah, fsotd.com. Support the show. Please. Maybe we will get out of the hood. You know <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> hey, that's the goal. That's baby. the thing. Man. That's the goal. Hey, I'm sitting here getting inspiration. It's like, a, you, hey, bro. You got, you made it out. You gotta a, wave people we're, away. We're Get away from the window. Nah, bro. Nah, it's 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 a fucking it's a blessing. You guys are definitely fucking. You might be in the hood, but you guys are definitely <laughs> on your way to fucking superstardom, bro. You're just killing it out here. So fucking yeah, no, nah, it, it's it's part of the grind though, bro. It, it, like I said, you gotta fucking you gotta sit there sometimes and and deal with circumstances that you might not like. And, you know, I did that in Frisco, you know, I, but I moved to San Francisco to get away from L.A. because I was so turned up in the L.A. life being that I had family in the music industry, sports industry. I have access to everything. You don't know what that's like having 99 percent access to everything in L.A. Like I said, I was I lived like 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 um, Turtle from Entourage for a good 10, 12 years out of my life from 2000 and Four to like 2015. Girl, you know, there, like 16. It up. I was a, man, a, a lot of people. Titty Tuesday. Just, yeah, big you know, yeah. topless Tuesdays and <laughs> a lot of other shit with a lot of other people that I don't want to name, but you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? We just had, you know, that was just one of my many hats. I, I, I was a bodyguard. You know, I was a big ass dude from LA and I'm with the shit. You know, I'm socking niggas and slapping niggas for free anyway. So when fucking <laughs> it, get a bag for it, like yeah. I'm on the block fighting with niggas and doing all this shit for free. So let me go fucking kick it in Malibu and do nothing really. Where there's I'm better chance of getting in the fight on my block with one of my boys yeah. than fucking over here in Malibu. So, you know, I was just be like hanging back, just fucking being a fucking big presence and getting paid, you know, and it was through that I made so many connections to, but also met, met so many business people and, and saw a way different life because when you get to that Malibu money, whew, that's different, bro. That ain't no Beverly Hills. That ain't no Miami. 
I'm talking about four million, the cheapest property. And that's a fucking one bedroom apartment on the other side of PCH. That's the minimum. That's the bare minimum to get just to say you live in Malibu. Technically, you don't even live in Malibu, but you want to start getting into those big properties on the fucking coastline. Oh, yeah. We're talking 25. We're talking 50 K or 50 million. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 different money. So when you when you be around that and you're hanging around that that's one thing i would always like i was young and i had all this fucking fame and family and shit around me where i could just easily access everything but i would always like okay take these moments and realize like bro these are fucking my friends at home are not fucking kicking it with people like this you know what i'm saying and i'd go back to the block and people would see me I'm fucking with my cousin. I'm at Lil Wayne's party and I'm over here rocking out with all these fucking famous people. But then like the next morning I'd be on my fucking motherfuckers who were like when this was when social media was first starting too, Instagram, all that shit. Um, they'd see me fucking back on my block in the morning smoking a blunt, eating cereal. But you just go on my fucking shit last night and I'm popping bottles with Wayne in the club. So it's like throwing up bees and shit. Like what the fuck? What the fuck happened? I'm like, bro, I'm a very, very normal person. As much as I love being out and being in the mix, I love my fucking peace and fucking tranquility, silence, alone time. I need that shit. And I've always been like that. So now when it's just like shit sonic, shit so lit on the business end with the, with the brand and shit, it's like, fuck, I really, one of the challenges that I have is finding that fucking downtime like that's one of the challenges that i'm having right now that i say if anything that's like not bothering me but like just giving me a little bit of trouble it's just trying to find enough time for myself to stay centered and stay you know because it, get, it gets overwhelming at times with the you know i'm a i'm a fucking i'm a really a one-man show with a small fucking team you know what i'm saying i got a powerful team but my team is not big you know what i'm saying and i don't have a lot of people you know, I got my fucking guys that help me. These are right here. One of my other guys is not here, but there's really like four or five people that I really keep close and that's it. You know, like everyone else that I try to put on the people try to bless them and give them access to this wave. And, you know, they just didn't know how to fucking handle the bag or handle fucking building a brand or doing, you know, I had countless people I fucking bring along and tell them like, yo, come on. Let's go fucking move these pad and fucking ran the pack price up to this price with memes. Me and Sour Waves running, telling people that memes set prices. Elon Musk telling people that memes, the man who controls the memes, controls the money, controls the. We really fucking had that shit like going. And then when the fucking pandemic hit and everyone got their fucking bread and everyone was just balling out of control, I'm fucking trap boxes were going for the high, bro, because it was like, this is the connoisseur pack. You got fucking 16 flavors of high quality fucking gas broke down in the fucking 64, seven bags for you with this fucking art piece you can put on your mantle. I need seven K period. You know what I'm saying? That was it. I was like, yo, is what it is. My, that's my hustle and my, and where the fuck else are you going to go get 16 different zips from or 12? You know, it might not always be 16, but it would at least be a dozen, dozen different flavors in the box. You go to any fucking dispensary and try or anyone and be like, yo, let me get an ounce of this and an ounce of that and an ounce of this. It's going to cost you more than that. So I'd be like, well, you're going to have to pay because you're also paying for the art and the experience and the and the way I would present it too. like when I first started selling them, I, was, I thought to myself, OK, like I said, marketing, how can I make this thing bigger than just me recording the box being sold or, you know, how can I do? OK, let me whip out the fucking marker first box it just hit me something said sign it got the camera boom trap box number one you tapped in with two stack zach da -da -da. the realest nigga in the trap boom we got trap box number one got 99 to go shit there's a mountain i gotta climb but i use that too i use that because you got to get 100 i had to through sticker form i had to get 100 boxes printed at a time so i'd get the boxes done but that first 100 i got was like when you see the 100 trap boxes and you're like fuck I really got to move these hundred fucking packs. And it's not like I'm moving a hundred turkey bags. It's a lot different when you're busting it all down. 64 sevens with the tray in the bag, 12 different strains in the box. It's a lot of work. So when I get 20 packs in, I don't get 20 packs in and get to sit on them till they move. No, I got to get the fuck to work. 
I got a fucking 64 fucking for each 20. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Bags, trays, everything. I got to get the fuck. If you're hanging out at my house, you're not fucking kicking it. You're fucking busting down sevens or you're rolling up or you're doing something. Because I don't know that sitting around and playing video games and shit. I don't like that shit. I got one of my boys who be doing that shit. I'll be trying to get him like, yo, come on, bro. This is like, you know, fuck the video games. Let's get this money. You know what I'm saying? This, the, the branding is my video game. This is my game, bro. This is my Nintendo now. And it's really, really got the fucking Zelda. I'm really diving into the Nintendo. Look, we got Zack to the future right here. You know what I'm saying? Throwback. This is a remix of the old TNC Surf game. I got my rosin, rosin jars coming out with the old school TNC Surf video game from Nintendo. This is a remix of that shit. So what, I, what would you say? Like advice for someone to like, how do you get to the plug? The plug? Yeah, how do you get to as the plug? As far as which plug? The, the, the guy that you need to get to to make shit happen, right? Like, you, you're trying to create something. You're trying to find that person. Like, I mean, advice? Oh, shit, you just got to be persistent, bro, because I've been, I've been the guy who stumbled upon the plug very easily, and I've been the guy who had to fucking search and search and find and look, and I've, I've been fucking... There's certain things that I've been working on and plotting on and trying to fucking figure out how to create and couldn't, you know, it, it, it's just a matter of finding that right person and building it and then really being able to trust that they're going to bring your vision to life. Cause that's the, that's the bottom line. It's like, are they going to be able to do what exactly what I want? So when I'm really, really like my artists, for example, I'm blessed because they will really like, some designers I've worked with where it's like, yo, they don't, they take it personal when you, when you want to, it's not, I'm not correcting you, but I'm like, it's my vision and I'm paying you. So I want it to be a certain way. So we're going to sit here. And if you can't handle the fact that me and you are going to play image ping pong till we get this fucking thing, right. The way uncle Zach fucking likes it, then I can't work with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just nothing personal, but I need my designer to be on board. I need like, I'm, I'm very, very like, I'm from LA, bro. I'm fucking Kobe Bryant raised, bro. I have that fucking mamba shit in me. I want to win. I don't want to fucking lose. I don't want no fucking slackers on my team. You come to practice, bro. I'm busting your ass at practice. I'm talking shit. I'm going to make you feel bad. I'm going to make you feel unwanted, but I'm not doing that because I don't want you. I want you to be able to fucking handle all adversity. I want you to be able to win when I need you to make the fucking shot, when I throw the ball or throw the pack or throw whatever responsibility to you, I want you to be able to handle that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I always use that and I compare myself. I compare Zach Woods to the fucking 2010 Lakers where mm -hmm. like that year when Kobe just fucking had to go get that fifth ring by himself and he had the broken finger and fucking Sasha Vujicic and his team and just, just didn't have a lot going on, but he had went out there and fucking rallied those guys together. That's how I feel like my team is. My team is small, but we get shit done. Like my fucking guys right here, bro. They, they heard I'm coming to fucking LA. They're in the Bay. They fucking live. They're fresh out the fucking, we, we all fresh out the fucking hotel shower off the road. I'm off the airport. They're off the fucking the highway. You know what I'm saying? They pulled up on me just because they know what this means for us. What we've been doing, we've been working hard, bro. Behind the scenes, like everyone thinks, yeah, Zach Woods is cool. It's cool. It's funny memes and shit. But, bro, I'm a fucking hustler, bro. I'll go hard for this shit. I, this is my life. And I don't fucking, I want my boys to be able to fucking eat off this shit. I want my family to be able to eat off this shit. I want to be able to just say that I left something and I did something in a way that no one else has done it. But it still made enough noise to stand up there with the big boys because I remember that shit, bro. I remember when I was little Zach in the corner at the sesh and all the runts dudes were over there and the team keep it lit dudes were over there and everybody was fucking popping and selling packs for the high. And I just had my back, my backwards with stickers on them. I'm just like, Hey, I'm lit. I'm here. You know, but I was like, shit. And then I'm looking at gas house and fucking, Oh shit. Kingston and fucking, you know, and, and fucking Felix and looking at these dudes and like, fuck, I need to get my shit cr cracking. Cause like, I always felt like, bro, I've been a part of this weed game and selling weed and trapping and taking those trips to Humboldt and doing all this shit for so many years. Like, I was no way I'm going to sit here and not make a bag off this shit, bro. Not make my life change off this fucking plant that I've been 25 years invested in. So once I saw the path, it was it, bro. Like, I went Mamba mentality, like literally Kanye shit, lock myself in a fucking one bedroom fucking apartment that I still pay for to this day. I don't even fuck. I haven't even moved my Zach Woods got so popping. I'd left my San Francisco apartment. I ain't seen a lady in a year and a half. 
I send her her fucking thousand dollars every month. Just hold my shit, boo. I'll be back soon. I don't know when, but I'll be back soon. You know, and I'm still my block. I'm still got my shit on the block in Frisco. So when I pull back up to the bay, I got to go check on my crib over there. I got bikes in the crib. I got all types of shit over there. I got six bikes. I got a whole fucking wardrobe, 20 bottles of cologne. I got, man, I got a whole life that, that I just left behind because Zach was took the fuck off, bro. I literally had no time to, to go back to Frisco. I don't have time. This is my first time back in LA in a year. So it's like, I've, and it's not because I don't want to come home. I love it here. I just, haven't had time. This shit is, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking maniac out here. You know, it's got, I got to fucking do every aspect of the shit, but like it, I love it though. I love waking up and knowing that there's a fucking challenge ahead to, to keep the brand going. It's like, you know, it's a challenge, but for some people, they don't see it that way. It's like, they just think it's like, Oh, I'm here and I'm lit and I'm going to be lit forever, but you're not going to be lit forever. If you don't put that elbow grease in, so you got to put that shit in. Don't be afraid to, you know, I carry a fucking Gucci bag, fucking big ass Gucci bag, but motherfucker will come rob me for it. But they'll think all you're going to get is fucking stickers because that's all I keep in it. Stickers, bro. I keep this Gucci bag filled with stickers because I just need to slap shit everywhere I go. I don't give a fuck. Wherever I go, I'm slapping shit. Why? Because I'm an old school tagger, graffiti, slap fucking you. That's what we do. That's how we get up. We, we, what we do you get up back in the day how you want to be known whether it was you're a fucking gangster or you're a graffiti dude you fucking had to take that spray can and go let the fucking streets know who the fuck you were so that's what i do still i don't do the graffiti shit too much i do a little bit with the uh i take i got a couple uh no trade no play stencils when i'm out and about sometimes i get on my and I'll just hit the little nose train. I see him in one way. Yeah, you shit. see, yeah. I'll be, bouncing, you know, I'll be bouncing out and out the fucking M6 every now and then. <laughs> Hop back in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's good, though. It's, it's, it's good. To, like, I, I love to do that because it's just like, I let, it lets people know that you were Uncle Zach's out here. You really, they, they see this nigga. And everyone knows, bro. Everyone knows. Everyone who's been watching this Zach Woods fucking shit unfold for the last four years. We're going to be four years old on the first of this month, so... Shout out to that. But everyone who's been watching this shit, bro, they know. There's no one who can deny that how fucking, how outside I've been. I've left my family. I've left cribs behind. I left, I've been left Miami. Shit, I haven't even been back to Miami since the last time we talked. You know, we were supposed to link up. We didn't because we were fucking running around like madmen. But I'm in Miami for a week. I go to my crib, sit there for a week and just decompress all this shit. But it's like, it's cool because it's like, yeah, okay. It's like, sometimes I think like, fuck, I'm paying for this apartment and I don't even be there a lot. But then it's like, that's my fucking crib, man. I got to That's where I built Zach Woods. That's where I literally, once I left Frisco and I came to Miami and I saw what was going on, I made the bag and I didn't do what every other fucking dumbass trapper does is go to fucking live and go buy a fucking, fucking thousand fucking gucci bags or go fucking rent 20 fucking yachts every day i didn't do that shit i literally like once i made my bag i was like bro i gotta get a crib i gotta get a miami crib and i can't get no fucking regular shit i gotta get some shit to let these motherfuckers know that i'm chilling and i'm comfortable because i have to be that i can't be in no little cluttered cluttered space my fucking crib is like a sanctuary bro like i'm fucking up there with the view I wake up with the fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm blessed for that shit. But that shit for me is so fucking the, the solitude that it brings me when I can just wake up. <sighs> got that view. Boom. That's the first thing you see. Boom. Walk in my bathroom. Got fucking all my fucking colognes right there. What do I want to get fresh, ah, get fresh, come out. And now I can create for the day. I'm fresh. I'm ready to go. My mind's clear. I got the view. I got all my fucking living room is basically a fucking Zach Woods castle. It's basically everything that I've built. And I kind of like stack it up like the, all the trap boxes that I've created. They're all in my living room stacked up and just kind of like on display. So when I walk, when you walk in my living room, it's like you literally walking inside of my brain. Like I've had people tell me that they're like, bro, like every all your thoughts are on the fucking wall. And like, yeah, because this is what I do. It's like it's, it's got to be nonstop for me to consistently create. It can't be no bland environment. I need color. I need vibrance. I need fucking, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know. It's just me. That's how I get down. So, <laughs> Talk about leaving Frisco. Like what, what, you know, what moves you make? Because you didn't go to Miami right away, did you? Nah, I, um, I was in Frisco for five years. So I lived there for uh, five years. 
And it was it was great. I love the Bay. Like one thing I can always say, like the Bay was always when I when I talk about too, like the um earlier how the Bay re, uh ask, always reacts about L.A. You know, always asking if L.A. is better. I feel like L.A. people we never do that. We never compare the two cities. We never talk down on the Bay. We always look at the Bay as like, yo, we have this. We're from L.A., this dope part of California, but we also have this other dope part of California that you should check out with amazing weed and amazing views. We don't like shit on them. Everyone in the Bay shits on L.A. for whatever reason, probably because of the baseball shit. But, you know, like I said, it's just a, it's just a common thing. I always see like the, the, the nonsense rivalry. But me personally, it was just like leaving the Bay was never like part of my plan. I was literally the Zach Woods thing doing what it did. Never was, you know, it was unexpected as fuck, to be honest. And when it caught fire and it did what it did and I had to really start thinking about, OK, am I going to get a spot or am I just going to keep doing this fucking back and forth thing? Because I was going and doing the road and then come back and then go run the road and then come back. But what was happening was I was seeing like I was seeing this shit. Too. This is 2019, early 2020. I'm seeing I'm coming back with the bag. And I'm starting to see all the local trappers look at me like, oh, shit. Ooh, yeah, with this with these bags and this branding and this other shit. And I went to a completely different fucking state. But also, too, people were wondering, like, how are you just going to these fucking random states and just popping up like that? But they didn't know that I was 20 years in this game. Like I said, I've been around the country. I've been around the world. So I'm not like new to I got friends in all the fucking different states and shit. So I can easily pick up the phone. Yo, I'm coming. But now I'm coming as Zach Woods. I'm not coming as your old homie before. You know, I still am your old homie. But now I got a brand behind me, too. So it's like it's different now. Like I got some homies in Minnesota right now. They're waiting for me to pop out there. And, you know, we've been we've been friends for years. You know, we've been doing lots of doing lots of weed ventures and stuff. I don't know if you've seen that picture I posted the other day of uh, me and I uh, want to hear a funny story. Me and uh, Sharon Osborne. I had a picture of one of my boys. He came to he came to L.A. for the first time in his life, and we were I was living in Beverly Hills at the time. So I was like, okay, we're gonna take him. He's flying in. We're gonna take him do something nice for dinner. You know, take him to the Polo Lounge right there, Beverly Hills Hotel. You know, nice little Drake had just rapped about it in the song, so everyone's like Polo Lounge. Oh yeah, let's go to the Polo Lounge. You know, the Bolognese spaghetti is amazing. So again, we go in there. I'm telling my boy about the dinner. It's gonna be fire, whatever. And it's cool, like fucking Sharon Osborne's in there with her fucking family and like six, seven other people. They're wilding out at the table. They're making like a lot of noise, though. You know, a lot of fucking they're being kind of obnoxious, you know, with the air, with the British accents, too. I'm like, yo, like, who are these people like just being so, you know, this is a fancy restaurant. So the, for them to be acting that way and not being told anything, I kind of knew they had to be someone, you know. So I'm like looking around, looking around. I couldn't really make out who it was. But then she sends the daughter to come talk to me and it's Kelly Osborne and my boy is like tripping out because he know I don't really recognize her at first because I remembered the Kelly with the black hair you know the young gothic Kelly well now she's like grown up so I didn't really recognize her and she <laughs> she tells me yo my mom wants you to come to the table and and join us for dinner and I'm like what the hell like all right so I go over there just like we get up and we go over there and my boy is again, he's like, what the fuck? You know? And I'm like, bro, it's Hollywood. It happens. You know? So the fucking go meet Sharon. She's like, come here, you big handsome man. And she's, they're sitting in like a booth and they have all like, you know, the booth, there's like five or six people. She makes all the people get up and get out and makes us come sit right next to her. And my boy is just freaking out. And this is just funny. I'm telling this because he's so mesmerized by the Hollywood life. And I'm telling him it's so regular. You know, like this is what people don't understand. When you come to LA and you're tapped in, it's nothing. You know, it's not like, you know, where like a lot of my friends would be like, this is the most miraculous thing. It's just like another day. You know, it can happen anytime in LA. You guys, I'm sure, know that. You pre running your LA share. is definitely different. I feel like this will be a, a heated topic, but I feel like it's lost its way though. No, no, it's gone. And I, I, I'm going to tell I you don't why. I don't see it I'm anymore. Gonna, anywhere. I'm going to tell you why. Let me tell you why. Okay. This is why I left LA. Because it was, these are the opinions of <laughs> this is no, this is fact though. This is fact. Like I'm a it's real life. LA. I'm a real know, life. Know. You know, it's citizen. I can talk with anybody, life, bro. Like so, like when I've when I've I I lived in this city when it was the when it, at its best. 
20 fucking 10. Kobe's winning championships. We're fucking peak of the city. Everything's crazy. Fucking World Cup's going on. We got, we, you know, we're just killing it out here. I was, 2010 was like my favorite year. And then fucking once like we got to the point where it was really once we got to the point where Nipsey died. When Nipsey died, that really fucking the city of LA took like a big blow. You know, that was like a huge, like massive thing. And it's really affected the way the city moved. It affected the gangs. It affected everything. Like it was like he was so massive to the culture and to the community. And me personally, like I said, I I have friends and family in the music industry who worked closely with him. I had a slight relationship with him. So I was like, it was really crazy to watch him grow to what he was and then have that, you know, happen. And then the double whammy was when Kobe died. When Kobe died, bro. And then we go to Corona and then we go to looting and then we go to shooting and then we go to it just like that's why I kind of haven't been back in a sense. EDD scams been, are going on. Oh, so all the all hot the boys scamming, from every area everything. came. Bro. You could go on Melrose and you would see it was different crews and they didn't know each other, though. Yeah. Yeah. And they're so like they're there. watching each other. Like it right. was just it, things happen to LA that yeah. I think were bigger. Pop smoke. Pop smoke. PNB rock. I was about to say PNB, PNB rock, rock was fucking fucked up, man. Bro, all, we just talked care. about four tragedies. Yeah. None of those yeah. people. Tragedies. Big tragedies. Four, I mean, Big. on and on. And this is what, you know, this is what, what <laughs> sadly with the, the, the rap culture and the gang culture and the, all this hip hop shit, it like it, it sadly has this fucking, this aura around it. If you know, you know, I know I've been in the music industry. I got family members that were rappers and I, I did all that. I went on tours and I've been around there, you know, I've been in shootouts because of rap, not because of gangs, not because of where I'm from, not because of this, not because of any of that, because fucking one rapper or one fucking person fan from some other fucking city that didn't like this rapper, didn't like what you said, tried to come take our fucking lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. So that's why I was like in the in the midst of me living that living that. um entourage style life I was living where I had access to everything. I was hopping in hundred thousand dollar cars every day that weren't mine, but I could drive them fucking every day. Didn't matter. I'm driving down sunset in a cream Bentley with the top back blowing gas. Don't matter who fucking knows if it's mine or not. You're in Hollywood doing your thing when you're doing that every day and it becomes so fucking regular. It also becomes very tiring and it becomes very, very like hard to keep up with the life Cause it's different. The one thing I will say about the, this is the reason why I left to the Bay too, because LA is fucking, you got to put on every day. Ain't no fucking half stepping in the Bay. You come out in joggers every fucking day. I was so glad to move to the Bay because I didn't have to dress anymore, bro. I didn't have to cook. I didn't have to pull up in the fancy whip no more. I didn't have to do none of that shit no more. And I, I had already outgrown it too. I've done every, everything, been in every club, every fucking Hollywood fucking situation you could be in, good or bad, shootout, police, whatever, helicopters, whatever fucking you can think of, I've been involved in it. So like to, to, to be able to take a break from that was fucking like, whew. I moved to the Bay not knowing. I knew three people in San Francisco, in the whole Bay Area. I had three, one friend in Brentwood. One friend who lived in San Francisco, he owned a gym there. And I had one other friend that lived in like Walnut Creek. Those are my only three friends. And I only knew them because I used to fly into the fucking Raiders games and go watch the Raiders play in Oakland. And we would link up. So I'd be in the Bay, quiet, loving life. I left LA and I was just like, I can walk around. And then me looking at Frisco, like I'm in San Francisco. It's just... (laughs) Really white, really friendly, really, you know, happy, really a lot of fucking shit going on out here where there's raves and and people naked walking around the street and different types of craziness going on. So I'm like, okay, they can't be, you know, the crime element is way low over here. So I'm like, oh, I'm chilling. I'm finally, I'm out of LA. I'm away from the hood and the Hollywood and all this shit. Man, I'm like oh, so happy to be in the Bay, just being able to ride my bike. You can ask my boys right here. These dudes would see me. I went and bought a thousand dollar BMX bike and would be riding around San Francisco through some of the most dangerous fucking neighborhoods. And I didn't even know it. I'm just happy to be out of Compton and out of L.A. and out of fucking, you know, I'm happy to be able to wear whatever hat I can want to wear and not have to worry about getting banged on and all that shit. So and just being able to do that because you can't do that over here. I can't ride my bike in L.A. 
fucking someone's gonna fucking hop out the car and fucking get your ass you know yeah. but little did i know that same thing could happen in frisco i was just not aware of my surroundings yet right. i didn't know the bay yet like that so when i met my man Issa right here and then i met he introduced me to boogie bags and boogie bags is really one of my boys from the street who really showed me what was going on in the frisco streets and what the dangers were and what the hot spots were and where's then i was like oh shit i've been I've still been, a big city i've been wilding yeah <laughs> i've been wilding on this bike you know yeah, what, I'm saying? <laughs> what am i doing We're living in peace yeah but then then also too what happened was the zap my zach woods popularity started growing in the city so when i started doing zach woods and i started having this and then me and larry june linked up and we started doing bike rides in the city it became like a thing so where I remember where we would be riding around on the bikes and me and Larry used to feel so free and comfortable. But then at one point it just got to the point where like, nah, now they know us. Now they know we on these bikes. Now we got to have the strap. Now we got to, you know, it was like, we can't be riding. And then it got to the point where like, nah, we can't even be riding around the city no more. It's not even good. So, it's you know, fucked up how that is. happens, it right? Fucked, how that it's works. fucked up, you know? And it's like, you're at I, peace. And then, and it was totally a passion. Was, yeah. And then you lose the peace because of the passion so then you try to refine the piece yeah and it's crazy in a new way and it just but keeps, it's really hard because you're surrounded by a bunch of like fake shit yeah, artificial like you're with all people the with shit. uh you know different uh, people with expectations and trying to get stuff out of you but i feel like so you were telling you were telling us a little bit before but let's talk about the sweater Oh, the sweater. I feel like we got to get into that part because oh, that yeah. came before you know, my this is This is the, you know, this is the first smoke People of the day. Know, you first smoke Harvard. of the day, 420 edition, educational edition. We're dropping a little education in here. So I had to bring the Harvard sweater out today. But really, this sweater is uh, really synonymous to my hustle as well. Because when uh, it's where I really honed in my Zach Woods brand and really took it to the next level. And that was at the start of coronavirus when um, all of it took place and I was in San Francisco and I'm realizing what's about to happen with the shutdowns and the masks and the standing six feet apart. And I just knew at that point, the, the, the pack prices were already kind of on the low, like on the decline in the city at that point. So I, I just knew me as a brand sitting in San Francisco was not going to be my best option. So let me go somewhere where I can go run up a bag at least and then sit there and figure it out till we figure out what's going to happen with this whole lockdown situation. Because they remember they're saying it's going to be like three weeks or a month or something. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go kick it in Boston for like a month, you know, but I go over to Boston and I'm just like, you know, happen to find a little cut in fucking Harvard campus. That's just like right on the fucking campus. And I've always like, wanted to visit that campus for some reason just because i've always wanted Movies to just share right? not even that just like just you know the money the prestigiousness the everything that goes into like being just at harvard you know even from that movie how high they made it like such a big deal and then that movie was also part of the reason why i wanted to because i'm a hood nigga too so i'm like i gotta go blow a blunt at harvard like you know i get silas and jamal malcolm i mean uh meth and red you know so i'm like let's go you know let's go see what's good over here but i had just been there recently and i had a very good out out um outpouring of support from from the community so me being like, well, I just ran up a bag there. Let's go do it again. And let's go sit down here and see, let Boston know I'm really going to be out here for a minute. So show them what we can do. And while I was doing that, I always had a, uh, I used to have this dog named Hershey. She's a bulldog. And I always wanted to find a, like a, a, a Harvard sweater for her with a big H on it, you know? And I could never, ever find that shit. I was always like, let's go back to those things you're always like looking for. The plug, or you find the plug. I was trying to find the Harvard plug, right? I couldn't find it. And I was looking online, and searching, searching, searching. I could never find where these fucking, where they sell Harvard merch at. They got to sell it somewhere. Nope, couldn't find it. Nowhere. Nothing that was worthy of a, you know, of a dog or a nice little sweater. So always when I popped out there, I was like, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fucking Harvard fucking campus store. They got to have a fucking, they got to have. You just shit. pull up. I just pull up. And it's, it's, it's not like checking it out. Like you're just driving up. No, nah, I just literally, I was, I was kicking it there. And you know, I'd been, I'd been there for a couple of weeks and I was like, all right, let me fucking, there's gotta be a campus store. I'm like, let me fucking type it in. 
and it was called the Harvard Coop. You know, that's where you you go there. It's just like the Harvard Coop. You go to the store. You go there. They got all the shit. And there's people in there. You get a fucking discount if you're alumni and you fucking, you know, you can just shop if you're just a regular guy, you know? So the first time I went in there, it was like, it was like right when Corona had first started too. So all the prices were like super slashed. And I'm just like, yo, I'm going here and get these fucking champion jogger champion everything's like they got dope fits you know everything's heavy duty so i was like man let me go get all this shit real quick you know i go grab the whole fucking fit like probably like a thousand dollars worth of clothes and they're like looking at me like this you play for the team or something yeah and i'm like nah yeah. bro i'm just like you know i've walked like bro i went and got the carlton sweater I got the Carlton fucking the 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 polo with the one. What would you do? Is like put throw it on and pop out. And you started just meeting everybody I'll, and shit. Bro, I'll pop out. You, bro. you were going to parties and shit, or what? I was. Uh, I was actually. I had networked with a couple with a couple kids that were that were from you know the school, and then it would just be like I said. Once the once the Zach was started circulating through the campus, you know, it kind of just did work itself out. And the kid that I knew that was on campus was kind of like running back and forth, grabbing a little shit here and there. Then it kind of got bigger. Then his friends started hearing about it. So I'm now they're like, oh, you're here. You're here. Like they would always be like, when are you leaving? And yeah. I'd be like, I don't know. And they would just be like, oh, OK. So I just became like, you know, and they would be like, oh, shit, you're right here. I'm right. I'm right here on campus. Like pull up. And they'd be like, oh, shit. So it was just like. Boom, it started booming. And then I started meeting, like, I started realizing that it was funny. One day I was hanging with a bunch, like, probably like four different kids, and they all had presidential last names. And I was, like, tripping on that. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, there's no way these niggas are all, like, I'm like, are these niggas really, really, really related to the presidents? So I asked them, and they said they were. And it was crazy, because there was, like, a Lincoln, and there was, like, a Kennedy, and there was, like, a Washington. And I'm like, what the fuck? You're like the great, 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 great grandson of like George Washington or some shit. And they're like, yeah. And they really explained to me like how it is at Harvard. Like, bro, like they got that, that privilege, that real privilege that really, I think there's like 4,000 spots every year for students to get in. And like 2,000 of them go to the fucking, the, the, the president's kids. And then like the other 2,000 go to like the rest of America. Wow. <laughs> it's like crazy. But those wow. kids are in no matter what. They're already in. They're, you're George Washington, you're in. Lincoln's fucking relative, you're in. You know, it's just like yeah. you got that free Harvard ever education. Damn. It's crazy, right? Shout out Tommy Lincoln. <laughs> Shout out Tommy Lincoln. <laughs> Billy Lincoln. I don't know, right? yeah no it's a it's a fucking it was crazy though i definitely loved boston boston's one of the cities that really turned me up the most like i said when i really had to go sit down there with corona and just really brand it was psh, bro ask sticker farmer asking him brother they were shipping me fucking trap boxes the trap boxes to the motherfucking hotel printing fresh fresh off the press you see how me and sticker farmer get down sometimes next day we'll have a fucking bag up and printed and ready to go i'll have i'll tell the motherfucker print that shit overnight at the boston or new york or whatever fucking city i'm in boom like the night where we had um crazy i had a fucking boy who hit me he grows some fucking fire packs back home so he's like yo i got this crazy fucking cheetah piss gelato 41 da 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 and i'm like word my sounds crazy. I'm a wet bet. I'm gonna send me a little sample. I mean, you know, whatever. So that night, I had had the conversation earlier with that. That night, I had no clue, but it was Jada Piss versus Dipset. I mean, Dipset versus Locks on versus that night. And fucking Jada Piss just went ape shit on the fucking Dipset dudes, right? So Sticker Farmer, fucking right after the Dipset, the battle ends, they fucking cook up the bag where it's like, Jada in the fucking in the in the Cameron pink fucking suit with the brick phone and it's just said Jada piss and I was like boom I hit my boy I'm like yo you you got how many of those cheetah pisses you got I got like five I'm like bro send me them shits I got the bag for him right now I'm in New York the fucking verses just ended bro 24 hours later I had Jada piss pumping in the streets with the piss on Dipset fucking shit. No disrespect to Dipset. It was just part of the Mylar bag. But it was like, it was funny though. 
We had fucking Jada trolling with the fucking brick phone and the pink fucking fur, like looking like Cameron, you know? That shit shakes up the streets. It shook too. up it's the street, that, bro. I was in Funny how that I works. Because they end up hearing about New, it. New York couldn't, it they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. All the crews talking about it. They couldn't believe that. They were like, bro, did, is this with Jada? I'm like, no, it's not with Jada. <laughs> oh, no. Jada didn't approve this, but we just yeah. did this one for the street because he turned the fu- He turned the streets up that night. That night, bro, he, let, he put hip hop on notice. I was so happy. F- to see that shit too because I love Dipset and they are fire and they got fucking fire songs but Jada is one of them boys with these bars. You do not play bro, with him. I do still do rap but I'll play just leave it with at that. Jada, bro. You leave just that leave man alone that. when it comes to rapping. He's talking some crazy shit with right. his, these clever wordplay is Yeah, no. Out of, this, out of this world. So Dude, I sit there and tell you a story but he's rapping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it'll all be like, you We're going to be able to ask real someone tough. that's real close to him some questions Yeah, pretty soon. Oh, yeah, yeah no, he's he's a uh, he's a uh, he's very cannabis friendly, and he's definitely. Uh, I, I remember doing a sesh when 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 the sessions first started in Miami. Uh, I remember he was at one of them, and he came through, and he really was fucking with. The yeah, Zach. he was. Fucking he comes with the, through all of them. He was like if, they, the if they bring him through, he comes. Yeah, through no, he comes guys. through. Yeah, he came they check through. out every table. Yeah, he came. Through I've been there multiple he, sessions and watch how he moves. Yeah. I'm like. This dude's a he real He literally ass dude. pulled up on me yeah. and showed me love. And it was funny too, because Cameron actually came to a sesh too and did the same thing. Cameron came through and was like, bro, you got some gas over here. Like, I need this, you know, this and that. I'm like, Cam, you, you know it's good, bro. You know what I'm saying? Take a seven, bro. It's on me. You know what I'm saying? Don't trip. But like, it's still, you know, it's always good to see those dudes that, you know, that I respect real hip hop too. Like, I respect all these dudes that really come from that, that real life. So, Anytime it's like, you know, it's a blessing to be able to 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 sit back, smoke and get the opinion like Jada sat there and chopped it with him. He was like, bro, same thing that, you know, pretty much you and everyone else tells me, you know, I love the branding and I, you're, you're everything. And I'm just like, you know, I appreciate that shit. You know, it's, that means a lot because it's like for people to go out of their way to say that shit. I know this shit all looks flashy and da 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 da. But to some motherfuckers, it could look whack, you know, and that's their opinion. That's cool. But the fact that. 99% of people tell me the the opposite, that it looks dope and it looks, you know, it just lets me know that I'm cooking with fish grease and I need to just keep it going. You know, that's it. Straight up. No. I mean, so from Boston, you know, when you pop around. I pop around. So Boston. Where does it go from there? You know, like, Boston, I know you end up in Miami. Really and that's kind of. Really went from Boston. When I was in Boston, I was doing a lot of New York running, D.C. running. Um providence rhode island i was out there i was up in uh upstate new york you road running as you when you're running bro, road running bro literally getting kicked off of turo getting kicked off of the get around I got app kicked off, turo kicked off sure. of fucking you know what i'm saying like smoking in the car i didn't even do bro, shit. i don't even think i got kicked off of smoking i think i, I don't know that sounds guilty nah man that guy fucking i left like a lighter in there and shit. <laughs> i think i got kicked out for extending too many days Damn. <laughs> i just keep extending extending like bro you're getting your money why the fuck are you why yeah. you hating yeah you just made two bands <laughs> but like, you know fucking need my car back I need my car back well fuck <laughs> yeah, you should have rented it out right permafade banned him <laughs> what no our homie who always has like six cars on turo talk about the grinder a little bit oh you like that Easy, yeah bro, yeah man. yeah i didn't mean i didn't mean to, I didn't mean to pull that nah, up you guys like that. You know, so, nah, i didn't mean to work that. too hard over there you know you know where you know it's about making life easier these days you know so that's I, pretty crazy you just though. push it down and it, yeah this is my new grinder it's the um it's the zach woods nine thousand whack it collab the brand is called whack it grinders so i did a uh We're i linked i linked up with them wow. i saw wow. the i saw the saw the we'll product sure we show that. and what it could do we will and saw that it wasn't it's had no, no blade. I've always been a fan of uh, yeah, it's like a bead chain. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the end chain. of the thing that you use to shut the blinds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when That's I will see, we'll show we'll show it on that. Growing up, we'll I always had a coffee grinder. You know, that was always like our little thing. We grind with the coffee grinder, but the coffee grinder had the blades, and it would grind too much. You know. So you would just, this is kind of like perfect, and it has the little pressure gauge where you can kind of just push down. And just give it a couple little zaps and you get this perfect little flower right here. You don't got to, you know, do too much. It's all ready to go. Damn, that's cool. Use hell, it real man. quick. And this, too, yeah, man. give it a, give it a try. Just don't make sure it's not, yeah, don't put too much. Just a nice little couple grams or, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and chunky. Depending on how chunky you want it, you can give it a. You can go more fine. If yeah, you want. Yep. exactly. So pretty much is how, how you want it. 
How many seconds you usually? I usually give it like two, three zaps. I don't really, two, unless, three zaps. Uh, unless it's there like, you go. yeah. Two, three you know, zaps. Two, three zaps. Two, three zaps, <laughs> two, two, three zaps, zaps from Zach. The, you know what I mean? Zach machine. Like right here, you just set it up and give it a little. You can kind of hear it though, too. If it's like, you're, sometimes you have yeah. nugs that are a little bit more dense, so you might have to hold it a little bit, but two, three zaps like that, you should get a nice, like that one's a little bit more clumpy, see? Yeah. So you might have to give it one more little. So you little can, extended you, zap. You can hear yeah, a little extendo, but then you see, you know, you see it. You can hear when you got to feel it out. Yeah, exactly. You can What's feel it. What's your favorite it. thing you're smoking on right now? Favorite thing I'm smoking on right now. Okay. Ah, this is my time to shine. I'm going to let my boy get some burn right here because this fucking pink starburst from my boy Cash Rules, one of my partners from New York. This shit right here, I don't know. He kind of told me, he was like, I kind of want to get away from the Z and I kind of want to get away from the candy. But it's got some, you know, it's got some other little nice little notes too. You could check that out. And I got this other stuff, my my breeders. What do you think about all the small batch stuff? I love it. I love it. I've never. I one see thing, you, you. You grab some shit, right? One, you grab yeah, some Orkan Nemo yeah, and yeah. shit. What you I think about it? Definitely. I mean, I'm. I feel this like smells great. I feel like I had. A, what is it? What is this one? That's called Pink Starburst. I don't know what the genetics are on it, but he's probably keeping that hush hush. I think. But okay. it's it's some it's some nice. We can roll that up. I have this other right here. This is a. Uh, Jello Z and biscotti. This shit's crazy. You check that out. I actually like biscotti. Smell that and then like crack the nug open and smell it. It's like got like two different noses on it. And then I have here, I have some, this is that bubblegum Z. Oh, no, wait. Are those oh, rosin? This is sour, yeah. actually. I'm tripping. What's uh? What's in the? Uh, um, these are actually empty right now. They're just they're oh, just okay. uh, they're, they're just the first art displays, the first ones I got. So I had to bring them just to you know, yeah, yeah let yeah. you guys see them. But the rosin that I I'm using is uh for those is a collab I have with Mystic Melts. So this is my boy Mystic Melts right here. He's got some fire orange guava cake, and we just basically did a um I did a whole line based off the like TNC Surf video game and kind of just like took all his flavors and kind of just, you know, made different strains for him with different little incorporated. The, I have a little Zach cartoon that I use on every, everything. Like I have him right here on my Zach leaves, the little cartoon Zach. So we keep him in the loop right there. We got him on uh, a few different things. He's on the surfboard and he's, you know, counting money kind of like to keep him busy out here. Yeah. Check out that, check out that bubblegum Z. This is some Z truffles and, Cherry, new shit coming down. Yeah, we got new so shit. How, how, when you're moving around and stuff, like how do you how how do you you know make it pop off and like how do you you know get active within the community and well basically, spread the movement basically in an organic way. You know what? Like I said, what I what I love to do is like you know I love to interact with the people. So obviously, you pop up a sessions and shit. See yeah, if there's, if there's you know if there's a sesh popping, I feel like most of the time when I touch down in the city. The people, I don't really have to go looking for it. They pretty much know I'm coming and they'll like, oh, Zach, come to this event, come to this event, you know, and I'll just kind of fill it out. Like I fill out the ones that are like worthy of going or if it's like a decent, you know, location or if it's going to be someone else that's going to be there that's going to make the collab, make it a, you know, because, you know, the power of collaboration or just the power of having two fucking forces in the room as opposed to one. It just makes makes all the difference in the world. So that's why I like to, you know do that with all these different brands because it shows versatility you know where i can i can very much focus on my one thing and do my one brand and be not work with anyone mm -hmm. but that's boring to me you know like when you can create like yeah don't lift it up before it's done grinding <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna catch air on you <laughs> learn some lessons over yeah, here yeah. can't use the blender with the top off yeah you know, make sure you gotta hold it down tight so, uh, but yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely. So uh, you rely on the community and basically like I your, mean, your, your, I'm, your I'm, fan base. I am the community. I'm, I'm outside. Like I'm well, when you're moving around though, like you reach out to the supporters and the, yeah, the streets yeah, well, tell I, you like, I have, Hey, I, have, yo. I feel like I have a, I have a following bro that like every, every city I go to, I don't really don't feel like I have to reach out to anyone. Like people reach out to me. They know I'm coming. They know I'm bringing the Zach leaves. They know I got cannolis. They know I'm coming with the, you know, the heavy hitting shit. And if you haven't smoked a cannoli, my God, you're missing out. This is the fucking illest hash hole blunt in the game. Two and a half grams of flour with a gram of fucking Mystic Melts rosin. You, you roll the cannolis? I roll the cannolis. 
And I'm I Dog, wrote, how, I, how do you find time to do all this shit? Like I really just fucking like I said, I'm a beast, bro. Like I, I really don't have much time. Do you like, have like a system or do you just kind of like no it started it started off it freestyle and then like once I kind of got to the point where I, I had like some structure and I had like uh, my own place to create, like, cause when I, when I was doing it in San Francisco, it's like, I'm doing it in a fucking apartment that I'm sharing with fucking a family that's got three kids running around and outside my fucking room. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, you're trying to build a brand. You can't do that. And then just survive the streets and pay bills and do all the regular shit. So once I got to Miami and I had really had that ability to just wake up and just be at peace and be fucking totally alone, 60 floors in the fucking sky where I don't have to be bothered by anyone. I could stay in my crib all day. And literally when I go home from traveling and trapping and doing all my road running, I literally fucking go sit in my house for fucking seven days straight. Do not bother me, bro. I'm playing See, Nintendo. I feel I'm in the my same sauna. Way, I'm in my fucking steam room, bro. I'm on the treadmill. I'm <laughs> really enjoying all the utility of the amenities of my yeah. building. When I'm there, because I don't, you know, I'm like, I'm on yeah. the road so much. So when I, like, when you ever, you see me in Miami, what do you see? You see me in the fucking, I'm on the fucking steam room heavy. I'm in there yeah. blowing a blunt. I go in there at two o'clock in the morning when no one's in there. <sighs> big blunts in the steam room, you know what I'm saying? Talking like, packs language, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big, big language, you know, big energy right there, bro. I'm, I'm a, that's the true way. Like, I used to fucking, I used to fucking have a cousin that played in the NFL and he, we, we would fucking wake up in the morning after his games and go fucking, he had a steam room in his crib. We'd just go fucking sit there and just fucking <laughs> roast blunt after blunt after like we would do the whole because he would play the game and go out and party with us but we would tailgate go to the game and then go out and party so we're just as fucked up as he is you know what i'm saying when it comes he played a fucking football game but we fucking just raged from fucking like nine to like fucking midnight <laughs> nine in the morning like midnight with like real like Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals out there in the fucking sticks with the fucking with the with the, with the folks with the folks drinking that good moonshine. You know what I'm saying? Have your ass tell the fuck up. So I was out there for real, like really, really with the fucking with the business, you know. But it would just be it would just be nonstop fucking energy, bro. What's next up for Zach Woods? What's next? Oh man, we got a lot. We got a lot right now. I just got major fucking distribution on my Zach leaves. So we're working on that right now. I'm finalizing all that shit. Going to do some updates to the artwork, little change to the packaging and shit. And then Zach leaves will be available to the fucking world. Uh, I've been quietly took me two years to really construct this whole leaf thing the way I wanted to. And I've watched, you know, seen a lot of other leaf brands come and pop up in the last like year. So like I've been seeing the, doing quality control on my shit, making sure my shit's up to par with everything mm -hmm. else that's out there. If like not up to par better actually. So I just feel like I have the best leaf out right now and like it, it can go crazy. So I know a lot, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from it and that's one of my major ventures that I'm really looking forward to. Um, 420, we have the whack it dropping on Zach's trap.com. And dropping at the uh, Gas House official, the Sesh 420 Sesh. So we're going to have that and the Rosin as well. That will be a popping in Atlanta. So we're dropping that. And then I have a, I have another big, big collab that I've been, I've been kind of like secretly working on that I fucking secured recently. That's very, very like powerful, very important to me. Because as you can see, I'm a fucking, I'm a fan of torch lighters. I don't really believe in lighting blunts with like with like Bix and shit like that, especially like hash holes. I'm very big on keeping the burn line and shit in order. And that's from roll BMC who also, let me get back to the cannolis. He's the one that taught me how to roll this way and really gave me the, the, the green light to like take, take this and run with it because I feel like he just didn't have time. He originally did my, my first ones, but once he taught me the technique, it was just like, you know, go do your thing. Young Kimo Sabi. So, I was always a, a big fan of, of the torch lighters. And recently I was, uh, I just went to the DR to go lock in the, uh, the deal with my, with my leaves. And while I was there, I met this, um, uh, the, the guy who's, who's, uh, I'm doing the deal with, let me know that there was a tobacco convention in Vegas afterwards. So we should meet after in Vegas. I was like, cool. So I left the DR, had a couple of days to get home, and then I went to Vegas to meet him. And we went to this tobacco convention, and I'm walking around, and we're seeing all the other leaves, and we're seeing 
everything, every brand that's out there that's got a leaf. So we're, you know, I'm showing them our leaf and then bringing in, they're like, oh, they're, oh, who's your distributor? And I'd be like, oh, well, he's right here, you know, and they wouldn't expect that. So I didn't let him walk in. I'd kind of like grease the wheel for him and then just let him roll in and kill it, you know? So we're over there getting accounts and shit. And I'm showing, I wanted to really show him who I was because I was just telling him in the DR, I couldn't, I could only tell him so much. I'm Zach Woods. I'm a weed brand, blah, 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 blah. You got to really see it though. Cause I knew all the big brands were going to be there. Weed brands, some tobacco brands, whatever. So once I was there and I started like, kind of like we started kind of locking in accounts, then I was like, yeah, I spun the block a couple of times and started seeing that there was torch companies that had their boots set up. So I'm like, okay, let me go see what's up with these companies, this and that, this brand, that brand. I'm, I can't remember the names, but some of the like regular brands we see out here in the stores and stuff. So I was like asking, what could we do for a collab? What could we do to make a collab happen? And they were like, oh, no problem. We could do a collab. We, all you'd have to do is buy the minimum, this and that. All right, cool. Then I spin the block and I see ST DuPont. You know of ST DuPont? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see them. And if you know anything about ST DuPont, they are the fucking Ferrari of lighters. They are the Michael Jordan of lighters. They are the fucking 96 bulls of fucking lighters. Do not talk to me about anything else. So these motherfuckers, I just been, been kind of feeling myself because I've already gotten the nod of approval from these other fucking companies, right? And But I know for a fact, because I'm a fan and I have about $5,000 worth of ST DuPonts on my fucking living room fucking table that they're not just collabing with anyone. And every collab that I've ever seen them do is fucking big with someone big. So when I went and fucking started talking with them and really told them what type of brand I was and I, I came, I had a trap box in my hand. I had the leaves in the box. I was smoking a cannoli because it was at a fucking tobacco event. So I'm like, literally got a torch. I'm showing them like, this is my fucking hundred dollar fucking blunt right here. This is what I do. I would never want to light this with a fucking Bic. I would only want to light this with the ST DuPont. Better yet, a Zach Woods ST DuPont. What can we do to make this happen? And he's just like, oh. Their response was so like, it wasn't even about the collab. They heard, you're a weed brand? Oh, shit. We wanna, we've been interested in doing something da 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 with the kid. I'm like, oh, really? Well, then I think I'm the person that you need to talk to because A, I support you guys heavy. B, anyone who knows Zach, they know Zach's got that fucking collection of lighters on his table. Because every time I go live, it's the first thing you see when I'm in Miami, chilling. All my ST DuPonts right there. So I'm just like, I really like kind of like sold him on the fact that he should work with me. And I'm pretty much the brand that will really be the one, you know, because I specialize in that. Everything I do is top tier. Everything I want, I want to have everything is top tier, upper echelon. So from the leaf to the lighter to the tip to the weed, everything, you know? So I don't want to be lighting all this expensive shit and then come with this. No disrespect to first smoke of the day, but you know what I'm saying? This is not going to fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? When I have this and I need to keep this fucking with the hash hole, you need to keep the burn line even. You know what I'm saying? So you always want to maintain that shit. And I just like, when you have the torch, it's easy to just give it a little clip. You're back on track. You never have to worry about your shit running. So. This was like good news to them. They were like, yo, we want to continue this conversation. Cool. So give them a couple emails. They're like, let's do it. Let's do this collab. I was like, bet. Give me the details of what we got to do. First thing they do is send over the NDA. So that's where we're at now. I just signed the NDA and just sent it back. So we're in the process of exchanging artwork with ST DuPont. And that's my next biggest collab i probably my biggest collab ever and i think that will really set me apart from a lot of these smokers and really let people know that i'm an aficionado when it comes to this cigar shit when it comes to this hash hole shit when it comes to rolling period i'm a goat i'm a god i, I take a lot of pride in this shit so me having my own torch is very very important to me so that's why i was like locked in with that let me get that do whatever i gotta do to lock that in and it's going now, so I'm like, let's get it. Now I'm gonna give my boy that makes these boxes an opportunity to create my lighter too now. So those Damn. those three thousand dollar boxes, that three thousand dollar and put some of that three thousand dollar artwork on this lighter and see what we can do from there. You know? He's the same one. He also did my grinder too, if you see. That's I dope. like everything uniform, you know what I'm saying? So 
Everybody knows. If you don't know, his name's Devin Almarinez. He's amazing. You look him up. He's got videos of him handing co- paintings to Kobe and giving C- Kobe paintings in his house and shit. Like people, he's legendary. So I'm blessed to have that just on my team. Like, ugh, it just gives me that much more strength out here. That's fucking amazing, bro. Congrats on the SD yeah. bomb. Yeah, man. That's that for me, it's huge, bro. Like I'm all my guys know. All, I mean, anyone who hangs out with me, I've pretty much majority of my friends have bought ST DuPonts because <laughs> they fucking hang out with me. They see the sick obsession I have with it. I can't, I'm sick, bro. I'll just go. If I see a lighter spot, I'll go drop a band. If I see a fucking get four new lighters just because I just feel like I, I, a lighter day, you know, I'm a collector. You know, that's what I do. I collect lighters like this one right here. This brand called Palio. It's a little fat boy, bloody red, but it's got the nice little heavy torch, thick thumb type action. So, you know, it carries a lot of gas, too, so you don't run out too too often. I'm like, I guess you could say a collector of, you know, fine things. But it wasn't really till I started getting money like that that I really, you know, could do that. But I would rather you don't see me out here. One thing you won't ever see me out here with is no fucking chains, no fucking none of that shit. Because I'm not about that, bro. I'm not about. I've had someone ask me before, like, bro, when are you going to get the Zachwoods chain? When you're gonna get the Zach Woods chain? And I'm like, yeah. bro, like, you don't see my fucking view, bro. That's my Zach Woods yeah. chain, bro. Right there. Every day I get to wake up and look at that shit, bro. That's people my, ask you that? Yeah, people who ask me that, bro. When chain. are you gonna get the chain, bro? Yo, we dropped the chain. Shout out to Drip Hydro, man. Shout out to Drip Hydro. Yo, we had to drop in. that like, chain hey, one time. Big gold one of chain our gang over here. When it's a gift, hey, you gotta drop it. No, when it's a gift, it's different. I'm just talking about, I'm not talking about. No, I know you're talking about the ridiculous ice stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go spend 30, not, 40, 50 yeah. thousand on a fucking I'm not, chain. I'm yeah. Not doing that. Because why? Because I've done it. It's not. It's I've done not it too. The best Trust me. Shit. Bro, I'm rocking. I'm rocking. I'm still waiting on my I, first and, smoke of the day chain. Hey, what do you mean? Trust me. <laughs> I, rocked, I rocked all the fucking chains. I chain rocked all day. That, that shit is fucking, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling, but it's you also get true. Your little micro I've been, piece. I've been the, I've been the hood ass dude who used to pass chains around. We'd be broke, you know? Yeah. All day. You know, but it was like, hey. Whatever we you were, had to I do, remember the going to Canal Street with this dude. We were buying fake APs, looking at them oh, yeah. and shit. Just like, oh, yeah. I, had the, I had the fake Brightling at one point. I was oh, rocking. Man. I, was I never really had the nerve to rock them, but I, I grabbed. Like, I was one young. Or two to I have was young, it. but like, you know, it was you know, an experience. You know what I got? This was this was probably in the early two thousands when the fucking downtown LA fucking wave was hot. They had the fake watch craze. Was going the fake Jordan craze. Remember the fake Jordans? No. You guys don't remember the fake no. Jordan craze when the fucking dub We're from Florida, man. We're from oh, Florida okay. boys. Man, we had this fucking. We had this. We had this point in time, bro. Etnies. We had this point in time in LA where, bro, like n- niggas were dropping fake Jordans. Yeah. There was like colorways you'd never seen before. Motherfuckers yeah. out here buying Jordans for sixty dollars, random ass colorway, thinking you can go hoop with them in the game, and they can get to the game and just ah, fucking ankle be all over across the street, bro. This is, oh my god, it was Holy fucking shit. madness, bro. Anybody, <laughs> anybody, bro, you'd be buying size thirteen Jordans in a size twelve box. Like, what the fuck is going on over here? The fucking box all fucking look like it been through hell, but the shoes are brand new. Like, That's what? LA in a nutshell. That's <laughs> LA in a nutshell. The fake, yeah, the fake Jordan craze, bro. Anybody know? I think that shit was around, I around 2005 to like 2008. It was around that time. It was booming though. Motherfuckers out here, fake dub zeros, fake fucking all type of shit. I couldn't do it though. I'm a size 14, so I can't do fake anything if my, my fucking foot will destroy it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Straight up. Absolutely not holding 300 pounds. Like, nah. <laughs> People going to be able to call them out. Oh, yeah. No, I'm. I, that's just something you can't do, bro. You can't do the fake anything. Even the diamonds and all that shit, bro. If you're going to do it, do it right. But don't be out yeah. here fucking getting diamond tested and your shit's not fucking A1. You're out here it's looking crazy stupid. they do that. Uh, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy, but what do you think? These motherfuckers, we live in this internet era where everyone wants to fucking try and prove <laughs> you wrong and prove that you're not really what you are. So it's like, you know, you got to really, got to really carry it that way. That's why I don't need no fucking chain. Because, yeah, I'd rather not have it. You know, it. I'd rather not have it. Yeah. And not even for that. Like, real talk, bro, I'm going to keep it 100. Like, the real reason... After seeing that PNB rock shit and then just knowing also go even deeper than that, knowing what fucking really those diamonds really come from, bro, and our fucking people back in Africa and all the people that really got the shit they got to go through to fucking get those fucking diamonds, bro. That shit ain't worth it to me. 
I don't fucking, I don't want to, you know, like I know fucking we're in America and a lot of people just think bling bling and that stupid like culture like that. But you know, you got to really think bro. Sometimes this, this shit be deeper than what, than just the shine. And you know, you don't really know the source of where some of these shit, this shit comes from and who fucking lost lives and blood and family. You know what I'm saying? Cause of this shit. So I think about that. And that's another reason why I just, you know, I stay away from it. But I just don't want that energy too. Like that shit don't do nothing in this culture. What is that gonna do for me? What is that gonna do besides get a hundred fucking yeah, angry trap a, niggas that don't got you know what I'm saying to come fucking try and come you know like I don't need that shit, bro. If you're gonna do anything, I'm, try I'm, to get I'm a nice here, watch. I'd rather get a nice fucking Bob Marley fucking wooden chain. You know what I'm saying with the peace sign and big Bob Bob Marley head on it or something. You know something that represents fucking happiness and love type shit. Because we we living in some crazy times right now, bro. And one thing I know for sure is like we got a lot going on in the street. We got a lot going on in the news, in the fucking world. These Russians and these fucking, you know, it's a lot going on right now. So we got to pay attention and you got to stay focused out here. Man. You got to make sure you you eating a balanced breakfast, getting those fucking nutrients. Make sure your brain functions. You know, you're not waking up just eating rodeo burgers and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Like we got to... <laughs> Fucking AM, PM sandwiches and shit like that. Nah, bro, we gotta fucking really be feeding your mind out here because you gotta stay sharp. And this is how I feel. It's like too much going on. You gotta stay focused. And it comes to building your brand and staying safe and, you know what I'm saying, making money. You gotta like, I have so much to juggle every day with all that on top of the fact that I still gotta make memes and be two stacks, Zach. And you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's, it's, like I said, it's part of the challenge. Every day is like, I wake up and do this shit and just be like, man, it's lit. Cause I used to wake up and fucking duck bullets. You know what I'm saying? Like wake up and just be in a fucking place of fucking hell that I really would sit there all day and want to, want to figure out a way out. So well, now that I fucking figured that shit out, it's like, bro, you gotta make sure you go hard and never go back to that shit. You know, where can people find you at? They want to reach out. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Zach Woods, the brand until Instagram wax that page. Then you can find me at Zach Woods forever until they whack that page. And you can find me at legend of Zach Woods too. <laughs> and, uh, also I'm on, uh, YouTube, YouTube TV. You can check out my YouTube channel, uh, Zach Woods TV. I mean, and yeah, pretty much it. I'm pretty much on the gram. I'm on all the fucking telegrams, Snapchats, all the other shit. You can just find me link tree. Pony Express, whatever you need, you know what I'm saying? Straight up. <laughs> we outside. Uh, oh, any you. shout outs? Yeah, I definitely want to give a shout out to my man, Sour Waves, my big bro, Champelli, my brother right here, Issa, my man, Hans right here, Boogie Bags, all my guys that really, you know what I'm saying, hold me down out here and really help me push this shit to the next level. Sticker Farmer, you know, I'm going to forget some people already, in, already I know, but it's just like a lot of people that really been a part of this shit i-95 south exotics a lot of fucking people on my team that really just been down for the zach man i'm just i'm blessed i'm blessed that they just keep me keep me in their good graces man i got my man east out here throwing me alley-oops he just threw me the alley-oop with the leaf play you know told me 911. you got to get on this fucking got to get on this flight you got to be on this flight to go meet the big dog and i'm coming out of the fucking doing the squints fucking you know, whirlwind of doing the squints trap lot event. You know, I just had that done Saturday, Monday morning. I had to be on a flight to DR to meet some dude I never met. And, but it was what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I didn't think about it. I didn't fucking blink. I just booked the flight, got my passport, went and fucking knew that this trip was going to fucking change my life. And it like literally did. Like not even just from a financial aspect yet, because we haven't even really started to go crazy yet, but it was like an adult field trip. You know, you know, that feeling you have when you go, when you were a kid and you're going on a field trip, it was like a fun ass day. You're going to have fun all day. It was like some, you're going to learn some shit. You're going to do some shit. That's how it was for me. Like going to the tobacco fields, really getting to see how they process everything from seed to the fucking final fucking leaf to I saw a fucking fucking ladies laying in the dirt bundling the shit like real really in the trenches bro i was in santiago where it was really really goes down you know so just to say like saying all to all that to say that you know i'm blessed to have like you know brothers like him who you know look out for me in those situations he, he sees a play 
they'll throw it to me because they know what I'm what I'm capable of and they know when I lock in on something, I'm gonna go crazy. You know, it's not like I'm not one of these half stepping ass niggas, bro. I just I just can't do that shit. And I've always tried to encourage my dudes, like, come on, bro, come on the road, come with me, come sit in this fucking hotel. I know it well, you're gonna change your fucking life, bro. I'm telling you, it's gonna be rough, rough at first, but then when you make it out that shit and we just start, you know, booming. Now it's like, you know, we're we're about to be four years old, Zach Woods. And we outside, bro. Like, nobody can tell me. Like, I, I don't see nobody really, you know. I see a lot of brands. No, no disrespect to any brand. I'm not going to shit on anyone or say nothing bad about any brand. But what I'm just saying is, like, I feel like no CEO of any brand is outside like me. I'm just really in every state and wherever I need to pop up, I'll pop up. Bro. I've been in fucking seven cities in the last fucking 10 days. Got two more to go before I get to fucking Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? For 420, what day is it? The fucking, I got to be in Vegas to the, for the, on the, on Saturday morning to pick up my wackets that just landed from China so I can debut them to the world. So I'm happy to stay, you know, happy about that. It's just like nonstop movement and motivation, bro. And just, just grind. That's why I got it right here. Inside the wacky, you see? Grind till I die, baby. You know? Everything is branding. Straight up. Hell I keep yeah. saying that straight up. But man, <laughs> I was like sitting here high as fuck yeah, listening. Like, cannoli you, got yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. whacked over here. Uh, fucking wise guy over here. The cannoli. Two stack Zach, man. Hey. Yep. Got me whacked. Hey, yeah. No, it's crazy. Oh, it's just what happens. Uh, what do you think about this... Uh, First smoke of the day, though, tip that I just came through. Well, what's with. up with it? We got to. I'm going I'm to bust it we down gotta, right we, here. We, are, we might we'll do that this off, off the mic. Off the mic, oh, off man. The mic. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come we, on, we, man. we got this, uh, well, you so know. So what, we just, just put a little, put, put yeah, the tip so in Yeah, so basically there. we have got to roll know? the tip a little smaller. And yeah, let's talk about off the mic, man. Make them stay for something. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stay. I ain't going nowhere. Shit. All right, cool. We got Hell some yeah. flavors to try. We got a few. Let's get into it. There's some other stuff it, on the table. We'll show oh, yeah. some Shit. stuff off. We'll get into all that. Oh, Yo, yeah. go to For fsotd.com. Sure. Register if you haven't. Off the mic. Um, push pops. Get you some fire. push pops. What's that? Let's see. This is a uh, a candy. Oh wow. A candy. You know, everyone's in love with that candy right now. So I just had to bring a different form of packaging to the people. Zackaging, as I like to call it. We're gonna uh, get into all that on off yeah, the mic. Gonna off the mic, you're gonna see a little We're bit. We're also gonna exclusive. get into the family ties tea. Oh yeah. So by the time this airs, it'll be right after 420, but there'll still be some on the website. Damn. Don't dude. push me. Push a push pop. You did the Z like everybody, man. Hey, I did. I, I had to look it. I had to. <laughs> hey, don't, but look, don't knock it. I don't knock it, but look it. I waited. I waited two years to do the Z. <laughs> Everyone was doing the Z in 2019. I waited till 2023. <laughs> this is fire, though. And you I passed for doing the cool packaging. Yeah, thank you, bro. That was just something I, I I was like, everyone's on this candy wave, so I'm like, let me give them a candy. That's really dope, though. And it's, it's fun for school. the consumer. Someone's yeah. copying that immediately. You remember that old, remember <laughs> yeah. that old school mom? Let me get a dollar. So I'm gonna get a push pop back in the day. Straight up, you know. Uh, these were those some were my legendary. Favorite. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, uh, shit. Yeah. Let's get off the mic, man. Just Episode it, man. 92. We're here with Zach. Woods. We outside. Zach Woods in outside the building. Outside all Tuesday, day, man. Zach, the realest nigga in the trap. We live. Let's go. Peace.